<laughs> water. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Um, <laughs> so this is kind of a third part from last stream. Last stream was kind of a two-parter. It was, um, it was like the first stream I did was making, like, the digi feet paws, like, carving the foam, starting up the feet paws, and then the second stream was finishing the feet paws and the heel here and talking about how you do the knee padding and the butt padding, and I didn't end up showing how to do the knee padding, but it's, it's really the same exact process as doing the heel, so I thought I was kind of redundant, but... Um, the only difference is, you know, it's a different shape. You just, you just gotta, you gotta keep a, keep an eye out for it. Make sure you get the right shape. But, yeah, um, so I decided I felt like streaming, and I did get a few steps past that, so this isn't a complete, like, third part, but it kind of is, because I'm gonna explain the stuff that I missed. Um, so, yeah, first, first up, we're just gonna start by explaining a little bit here. Sorry, kind of talk heavy. Um, so yeah, that's where we left off last stream. We had our dummy, and we had the padding on the knee, on the butt, and the heel all the way down to the foot. I'm actually going to turn the camera down a little bit. There you go. And my dummy is just a little bit too high up. He's just, just a little too short, like two inches too, too short to reach the ground. That's why I have this, uh, this bin. I was using a tape roll to hold the foot up a little higher, but I found this bin and it's it's much better. It's perfect. Perfect height. The, the, my last one had the opposite problem. They were too tall and I had to raise the, the bar up by boxes. I had two of these stacked under each side. He was tall. Spartan was tall. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so that's where we're at right now. So after... After you get the foam padding for all your stuff done, you got the knee, the butt, the heel, the foot, even if the heel and the foot are disconnected, doesn't matter, however you want to do it, one piece or two, um, the next step is you need to start making the pattern on the dummy. So you have the knee pad, right? You need to make sure, you know, you just get a roll of tape and tape the knee pad on there. Make sure it looks good from every angle because sometimes you might put it on and it'll look great from the side, and then you go to the front, and then it's like all off-centered and stupid looking. <laughs> so don't do that. Um, so put put your padding on, the knee, the butt, uh, and just put a few pieces of tape. It doesn't have to be crazy, just like maybe one or two rolls of tape, uh, strands of tape. Just hold it in place. And same for the back of the heel. You need to hold the back of the heel in place too. <laughs> hey, how you doing? I haven't seen you in for- Ever. I know, right? My schedule is so jacked up. I don't even know when I'm supposed to be awake. I think I woke up at like 2 or 3 a.m. <laughs> I have no idea. Anyways, how are you doing? I hope you're having a good day. <laughs> Last stream, my hair was really staticky and clinging to my head. And this stream, it's so fluffy. And it it's... <laughs> my hair. My hair. I swear. I don't know what to do with it. Okay, yeah. So let's say you taped the padding on. It's all in place. Excellent. The next step is to get out some da -da -da -da, saran wrap. It's plast plastic cling. Oh, there's fur in here. <laughs> plastic cling. Cling. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't speak. I always stream when you're at work. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Whenever I try to do anything, it's I'm always doing something else. It's, it's, it's like, there's always too many things to do at once. I'm so sorry. <laughs> are you, are you working today? I mean, a lot of people have off today, but, you know, I'm not really sure. Um, I lost the roll. Anyways, Saran Wrap is just the name brand of Cling Wrap. It's just, just clear Cling Wrap. I even have some on the foot here still. Ta-da. Just clear. It's in the food, in the grocery section. Usually you put it on top of like a bowl or something before you put it in the fridge. It's like a makeshift lid. And it's disposable, so... Really, it's really cheap. Just two, three bucks a roll. You want to cover the whole dummy. Well, half of the dummy. Half of the dummy. 
Oh, you don't work Friday as much. I didn't know that. Monday through Thursday for 10 hour days. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> and I, I'm pretty sure you said you move a lot of heavy stuff, too. So, like, you must be a very, very tired person. <laughs> like, that's a lot of heavy work, you know. Me getting distracted. Okay. So, um, basically, most, most characters, basically all the characters I've worked on, um, are completely symmetrical. That was just lucky. Not all characters are going to be symmetrical. So, what I mean by that is, uh, I mean, you have some stripes on this side, you also have stripes on this side. I mean, it's got the same wave patterns on both sides. That's great. Um, that, that means this, it's symmetrical, which means you only have to pattern one half of the bodysuit. But if you have all kinds of weird different markings or a wave that goes across the body, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. But for what I'm doing today, it's mirrored across. So we only have to do one side of the dummy, and then we can flip the pattern for the other side. So that's really awesome. So you want to cover saran wrap over the whole body, but only on half, unless you need the whole thing. So like wrap it around. You don't have to do it super thick either. <laughs> You're in bed by 10 at the latest. Yeah, it's pretty early. I shouldn't be awake and neither should you. <laughs> Ooh, you're starting a costume. What are you going to do? Oh, I've always wanted to go to the Ren Fest. There's like a really pretty cool one in Michigan, a Renaissance Festival, and I've never ever been. I've always wanted to go. And it's so up my alley. Like, <laughs> I've always said, ever since I was like very young, very child, I was like, I'm gonna get married in a castle. And I know that's so ridiculous, but it's true. <laughs> All these years later, that's still my, my one life goal, get married in a castle, which is so <laughs> goofy, but it's definitely something, that's something that I would definitely plan for. It would make me very happy. A fair in Massachusetts every year. Actually, I have heard of Castle Crashers. I own it, and I played it for like an hour, and then I fell asleep or something. It was fun, though. It was really fun. One of my life goals is to live in a castle. You know what? That used to be my goal, too. But then I just decided to settle to get married in a castle, you know? And, uh, <laughs> my best guess is that it's the one that's pink. Because they all, they all mostly have the same design, right? Just different colors. I'm pretty sure. I don't know why I'm hunched over like this. <laughs> That's so cool! Well, you know, if you have any questions or anything, I can try to help you with any, uh, anything. <laughs> I was gonna explain, like, I was gonna show the saran wrap, like, the cling wrap, but I literally had the perfect amount that I needed. So I actually have to go to the store and get some more. Otherwise, I'd show you, but it's just, it's just clear food wrap. Find it in the Ziploc aisle. And, yeah, you don't have to do it super thick across the whole thing. You just have to have at least one layer of, of covering this. Because the purpose of the saran wrap is you have to put a duct tape layer on top. And you don't want the duct tape to stick to the dummy, because it will. And that'll be confusing. We're trying to make a separate layer that we can cut off without destroying the dummy. So we can put it back on the dummy, like, put the costume back on the dummy after to try it out. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't like destroying the dummy. I think it's really helpful to have. Oh, it's a DLC night. Oh. Interesting. I didn't know that there was so much to it. <laughs> we should play, maybe we should stream that. That would be a fun thing to stream. That's adorable. That's funny. That's good for Halloween. You should, if, if there's any pictures, you should send that to me so I can see what you mean. I'm, I'm very, I'm very visual. I'd like to see it. That sounds cool. Um, yep, yep, yep. Same thing. Once you get the, uh, the cling wrap on there, just one layer of duct tape. And, uh, it's kind of like Legos, okay? If you put, like, 80 strips of duct tape going down this way, 
it's not going to be that strong. But if every once in a while you put some going this way, make it like a crosshair thing, like a up and down versus left to right, it'll make it so much more durable. So most of these tapes are going up and down right on the belly here, but I do have a few going across just for the durability. Because when I cut it up, I don't want it to fall apart. That happens to me too many times, and it's just not fun. So yeah, um, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Since last time. I really should just edit this into a video, huh? But, <laughs> and nobody got time for that. I barely have time to stream, let alone edit it. That'd be fun. <laughs> you need more fan art. You should commission some fan art. Alright, so, uh, here's one thing I need to mention that's kind of important. <sighs> okay. So, everything is kind of self-explanatory with putting the duct tape and the saran wrap on. You know, you just put it around, all the way around. Um, under the crotch, even. Um, just make sure, okay, you're gonna have to have a perfect center line. So, uh, either mark it with a pencil or a, a marker or pen. Or, what I did was I put this top layer of duct tape exactly on the symmetry line right here. So I don't have to mark it. It's just, it's perfectly in the center here. This edge. So that's the way I like to do my symmetry. Except down by the crotch, it gets really, uh, like crowded and claustrophobic. So I can't get it exactly, like, centered. So down here, I'm going to have to mark the rest of this with the pen to get it right in the center. But, uh... Most of this up here on the belly in the back, you can just put the tape right at the edge of the center line. And it really helps later. It's just an extra step you don't have to do. Um, and the other thing I want to mention... Oh, okay, come here. I gotta pull the foot with me, that's why I'm having trouble. Hang on, let me read the comments. Yeah, yeah. So I would totally be up, uh, up, I'd be up, I'd be down. <laughs> I'd be, I'd be for... A Castle Crashers stream with you. That'd be fun. We've been wanting to stream together for a long time. Okay, so the other thing that's, uh, other, other few things I want to mention about the duct tape step. The neck. Okay, you want to make sure that the duct tape you put, this layer, goes up close to the neck as possible. Because I've seen a lot of people do this where when they make the neck, um, they, they, it, it's not like this size. It ends up being huge gaping hole. So you actually want to make the neck pretty small. Like, pretty small. And you want to have this, uh, this perfect circle. Like, you want to make sure your, your pattern comes close enough so you can actually mark it with the marker. Like, if you pad, if you don't put enough duct tape close to the edge up here with the neck hole, you're gonna have trouble. I hope that makes sense. Um, I guess I can just... <sighs> Just have hair everywhere. The other day my hair was flat, and today it's all fluffy, and I just can't win. Alright, let me draw this circle really quickly, just so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. There we go, okay. Good. So this is where I want the neck to be. Um, huh. I'm trying to carry the camera like this is weird. So here is where I put the neckline, right around here. So basically, if you don't put du your duct tape high enough up here, just make sure your neckline is close. <laughs> Not down here. That's, that's, that's the takeaway from what I'm trying to say right now. I can speak, I swear. Okay, <laughs> clean, de oh, decapitation, a clean one, <laughs> right? Don't just, don't just put it on the neck. Put it nice and, and perfect on the neck, right there. Just watch, YouTube's gonna randomize that thumbnail of me, like, doing the, the neck thing. Alright, and the other other thing I want to mention about doing the duct tape step, the arm. Okay, so, I think the arm is the hardest part about the duct tape step, to be honest. Um, right here, uh, this is where I stop putting the duct tape. Like, I'll come up through the body, make duct tape here, 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 stop here, all the way around the arm. And you can kind of see... Uh, I hope you can see. It looks kind of visible. You can kind of see where I stopped. And I actually left a seam here. Like an empty, open seam all the way around. And, um, then I continued on the arm. 
And this part took me the longest because I had to use small pieces of tape to try to like make it that perfect round edge here. But the thing is, these two pieces aren't connected and it's like that all the way around the arm. And the reason I do that is because, um, well, first of all, I need the arm, the arm piece here has to be separate, right? And if I don't, if I, <laughs> basically, I'm going to have to cut it off after anyways. Like these two parts are separated. Like they're, they're going to be in separate parts after anyway. So I'm just saving myself a step by making the seam now because when you make the seam, you want this, you want the arm to be kind of at like a 45 degree angle because see how this shape is here? When you, when you close the arm down, it, it, it gets bunched up. So if you have the arm down and you try to put the duct tape in there, it's going to be a completely crunched up different shape than if you had it up in like a full straight up T-pose. Or if they had their arm all the way up, like look at how much, um, <laughs> I'm going to put the camera back now, I think. Okay, camera. Camera. Good. All right, so we're, we're at an angle. I don't know why we're at an angle. That's kind of weird. I swear I didn't mean to do that. There we go. Okay. All right. So <laughs> I did this last stream too. Everybody look at my arm. All right. So here's my arm, right? Um, if I put it up, th this, this area needs more fabric. It's going to stretch. But if I put it down, this area needs more fabric because it needs to stretch down. And our skin, people's skin is stretchy for that reason. We can move our arm and it's, you know, <laughs> stretches the way we need. But a costume like this, obviously, I mean, if fur has a tiny bit of stretch, but not like that. So what you gotta do is, you gotta get your dummy in either like an A pose or a full on T pose. So I was kind of holding it up to here, which is kind of, kind of in between a 45 and a 90, kind of right in between. And that's where I made this round piece. So when you're doing your arm, make sure it's kind of like at this, in this, like in between. Um, and then, then you can go around the arm with the tape. And that's the hardest part right there. You don't have to leave an open seam like it, I did all the way around. That's just something I'm doing. I don't know why I do it. I mean, I try to explain it, but eh, doesn't really make sense. Anyways, so if you don't want to leave an open seam, um, it might be easier for you. I just did that because it bunches up and it just, it's harder. I just don't like doing it. So if you do make it one big piece, hold it up. Take your pen and draw all the way around that circle where you need to cut. And then you can cut it from there and get it. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> the big strong muscle arms. Yeah, seriously, I haven't worked out in so long. I'm so freaking feeble. <laughs> I'll show off my arms again in like a few weeks when I'm buff and then that'll be better. <laughs> you're so funny. I bet you're very strong. I know you carry a lot of stuff around all the time. Um for your job. How are you alive? <laughs> That's so heavy. I don't like carrying heavy stuff. Um. Alright, camera, you're coming back. We. Alright. So I hope that makes sense. Having the arm in a different position is obviously going to give you a different pattern. So when you're making your duct tape pattern, make sure it's at the right angle. And right here okay so parts that you're gonna cut around like parts that you're gonna cut and separate like you need to try to make sure you sew those parts back together in the proper way so what you want to do is put little tick marks like this on both sides of the seam so that when you cut it and you split it apart you'll know exactly which two pieces and where they stick back together so i have these uh i think i have several several little tick marks that go all the way around the arm and you don't need to go crazy with it but you know just every few inches you know put a few put a new tick mark across <laughs> oh element pain just most of the time that's terrible that's actually awful you need a new pillow and a back massage that that's what you need <laughs> i'm sorry should stretch too. Maybe that'll help. I don't know. All right. Now, now the camera. I can't. I cannot get the camera set because as soon as I get it looking good, I move it again. <laughs> I just. I can't be. I can't be satisfied before the camera is. 
All right, so that took a long time just to explain what I did up to this point. Um, <laughs> I would have, okay, so I have duct tape all the way around this whole half of the body, except here, uh, here down, and that's only because I ran out of uh, saran wrap, like cling wrap, so once I go to the store and get more cling wrap, I'll finish putting the duct tape down the rest of the arm. But for now, uh, we're just gonna go over a little bit more patterning stuff. So, yeah, I guess let's, let's move on to the foot first, because the only other part besides the arm that's not patterned is the, uh, the foot, so. Come, camera, let's go down. Oh, that's good. Yeah, stretching can help a lot, but also, like, sometimes it just doesn't. Sometimes, like, you know, sometimes it helps a lot, and sometimes it's not the problem. Like, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but you know what I mean. It's like, you can try it. If you're, if you're, if you're in pain and you're suffering, you can try stretching. Sometimes it helps. <laughs> um, you would probably cry if you got a good massage. Oh! I think I only had one, I only went to a massage place once, and it was a few years ago, and they were very rough, in fact, too rough, but you know, at the same time, it was awesome. <laughs> Ooh, why am I so toasty right now? I have the vent open. What even? Okay, so here's this foot, yeah? Um, I patterned it with duct tape almost all the way down, uh, but... First of all, this part is a bit more chiseled and stuff. It's going to be a little bit harder for me to get the right shapes with duct tape because duct tape is thicker and trying to get that thicker duct tape to bend and follow the contours of this very defined foot, it's harder. It's much harder. I'm actually going to move this down. Come here, microphone. All right. Uh, that might be better or that might be worse. We'll try it. Okay. So yeah, now I'm just using regular masking tape. It's a, uh, it's it's something you could use for the rest of the body, but honestly, the rest of the body I prefer duct tape because it's a little bit more durable. It holds its shape pretty well, but masking tape be works better for these tiny little shapes and stuff. So that's why I'm using that for this. And I'm only going to use, I mean, there's different sizes of masking tape, so. This masking tape is two inches, and I'm just using it for this uh, thicker part up here on the top of the foot. Because the, the rest of it, I'm going to use the one inch and the half inch. Because they're thinner, it's easier for me to get it in the right shape on the toes. Oh! Hi, how you doing? It's your foot! <laughs> one of them. One of your feet. Uh, this piece is too thin. Why did I get this? I got distracted. Okay. So now I'm gonna start with the one inch and put it, start putting it on the toes. How you doing? I'm getting kind of hot. I don't know why it's so hot in here. Like, it was a good temperature all day, and then I started streaming, and it's like, wow. Time to get hot outside. Probably because I have the window open. My room is like a greenhouse. <laughs> Alright, so when I'm making this, when I'm putting this tape on here, I actually do have a small plan. <laughs> Alright, I'm sorry. I'm just fighting with the camera today. I'm trying to get it. Obey me! Okay. So I do have a small plan with this duct tape, uh, this masking tape. So. I kind of want to follow the edges, like, you know how we just did the chest and uh, we used the edge of this tape to like mark the center line? It's kind of like that. We're going to be using the edge of this tape to mark the edge of the toes too. So right here, there's a seam. So rather than like putting tape across that, I'm just going to like put tape around it on either side. I might as well not make, like, if I, if I, if I cover it like this, I'm gonna have to just cut it anyways, because there's a seam there. So I might as well just work around it. 
So I liked, instead of just, like, kind of covering everything and then exacto blading it off, I will, I prefer, my work, my work method is to work with the seam, work around it. See, if I pull this apart, you can see there's the seam in there. I'm not messing with it. <laughs> imagine just being that hot, right? I can't imagine that, though. I don't know what that's like. <laughs> it's so funny. All right, so this is a pretty slow process, unfortunately. But, uh, I'd rather go slow and get the pattern right than go fast and just... <laughs> like, if it doesn't look good in the end, then what's the point, you know? So you might as well go slow and just do it to the best of your ability. All right, so... I'll show it off here again. So here's the seam. On, between these two toes, there's gonna have to be a seam here. So instead of crossing over like this, which you can do if you want, I'm just gonna start following the edges like this. There's so many things that are just personal preference. Like, I, I've seen some videos from other fursuit makers do things totally different, and I'm like, yeah, that works. There we go. Cool. So we're just going along with that seam there. So once you get to start start to get to more uh, like small curved areas like this, you're gonna need more smaller parts. At least if you're doing it the way I am, where I'm kind of not covering up that seam, um, because I can use these. The smaller the parts are, the easier I can make this uh, rounded out to follow it better. So I suppose if you didn't do it this way, if you wanted, you could just put tape all the way around the whole thing and then, you know, <laughs> exacto blade exactly on the seams. So that, that would be the other method. There we go, okay. I feel like I'm not a good Twitch streamer because I get so into what I'm doing. I get so excited that I forget to check the chat and... Like, that's kind of, that's kind of what the Twitch streaming is, right? Like, and when I forget to check the chat, it's like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't know, I just don't think I'm the best Twitch streamer that's ever existed. I'll just, I'll just say that. Yeah, so this is, this is part where, I mean, it's... Once you know how to do it, it's just, you know, you just go slow. Make sure that you get the most accurate shape that you can. And, uh, if you're doing smaller pieces, like in here, that's actually a really good spot to use the half-inch thick tape. I forgot about that. Why didn't I start using that? So, like, trying to get this curve here, I'm just gonna use the half-inch thick tape to kind of round it out. I think I did Figby's toes the other way, originally. Like, I, I just covered the whole thing and then I cut it off. But it's just not my favorite way. I don't, I don't know, it's something about the... I just don't like it. <laughs> I mean, I think, doing it this way, it's kind of like a puzzle, you know? You want to get it that exact round shape without covering it in the wrong way. I just have fun, I have more fun with that, this way, so that's why I do it. Best streamer 2021. No, it's not true. I'm highly flattered though, so I'm smiling as I say that. You're so sweet. I'm really not. <laughs> At the very least, I'm awful with the scheduling. Like, I tried to have a schedule. I tried so hard, and stuff just keeps happening, and I can't. I can't deal with the schedule, man. So maybe, maybe the scheduling isn't the best thing for me, but. Uh, at least as far as regular, as, as far as the streams themselves go, I mean, I, 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 I want it to be entertaining, obviously. I don't know. Like, I feel like I've seen other streamers doing just reg, you know, just making stuff and chatting, but they have a lot of viewers, like, holy cow. But it's, like, the same kind of thing I'm doing, so it kind of makes me wonder, like... It, what they're what they're doing like if there's something I can 
do to make my streams more interesting for people. Aww. You're so sweet. You just, you popped on Twitch because you're like, man, I want to see Clover making a foot today. <laughs> well, seriously, that's so sweet of you. Like, it's just, it's these few people that are, like, you guys that are just so nice to me, and it's like, the, the thing, that's the thing that keeps me going, you know? Like, I work, I'm working so hard on this stuff, and I, I don't know, I, I lose steam once in a while, because it's just, along with life, things get stressful, and I just, sometimes I feel like, well, what's, what's the point, you know? But, like, whenever I have nice people like, really, really believing in me. It's like, you know what? Maybe I can exist. Maybe I can make this work. And then I try again. <laughs> I try again to live life. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't need a ton of people to, like, validate me, but just having a few people that support me, like, that's, that's, that's really awesome. <laughs> That's right. Write a whole senior thesis about the feet. Make sure you mention how, um, apparently, apparently I forgot that Figby was supposed to have four toes and I actually gave him three. So make sure you write about that. It's a very interesting point, point plot right there. <laughs> now it's part of his character design. I just... I forgot. Now he has three toes. Three really big toes. <laughs> Alright. Uh, camera, we're going to the other side. But, seriously, thank you for supporting me so much. Like, it means so much. I don't want to be... Like, I, I don't really have a desire or need... Or want to be famous. I know a lot of people who make stuff, like uh, YouTubers and <laughs> dear Lord, all kinds, all kinds of. I've seen crazy people trying anything just to be like popular. But it's like, you know, I don't, I don't want that. But what I do want is, I just want to make some friends and make some good content, and I want to help out some people who want to learn, learn how to make fur suits. And I, I think, I think I've. I think I've done all those goals, to be honest. I mean, hopefully I helped out at least one person. Like, if I helped out at least one person, then that's that's good. You've been so for seven months. Oh my gosh. Seriously, I for I forget about that all the time. You guys are so sweet. I can't. <laughs> oh. I always forget subbing is a thing. Thank you so much for that. My gosh. That is, like, so nice. Uh. Clover is crying, but it's okay because it's off camera. Wow. Yeah, really seriously, like... I don't deserve that. <laughs> Thank you. Too nice for me. Ugh. Oops, got over the line a little bit there. Alright, we're almost done with this foot. We're getting there, guys. At least we're trying. Okay. I need my tape scissors. Oh! Really? That's awesome! I didn't know that was a thing. I guess it makes sense. Like, I, I guess it makes sense that that exists. I just didn't think about it. Okay, so here's another example of, like, how I was trying to line up the stuff. Like, the top of the toe here, right? It's supposed to be kind of rounded right here. Rather than just completely covering over it, I'm actually going to put the tape to go around, around the form with it. So this is... I'm trying, I'm trying to keep it, um, trying to keep as much of the shape as possible when you're doing this. 
and for the bottom of the foot down here, uh, I tried to put like a flat piece, like a piece that goes all the way around flat on the edge. Let me try to show, because I do need to add another one, because it got slid up a little bit. Alright, right there on the end. Come on. I'm trying so hard. There's, okay, I'm really trying really hard on this. Ah! I'm dropping stuff. More like Indigo is dropping stuff. His arm just whacked something off the desk. <laughs> Thanks for that. Okay, here we go. So now when I take this off, um, th when I take this whole foot thing off, right here, this bottom of this one tape, I know that that's the edge, the edge of the foot here. So just try to leave yourself little uh, details like that. It's just little things you can think about while you're trying to make your patterns. So like right here, where the toe is, um, I'm kind of like pushing the, the tape down into the seam so I don't lose that detail. And to be honest, when you cover all this stuff with fur, like faux fur is the most forgiving kind of uh, fabric ever. Like if you make a mistake, it hides it. <laughs> it will hide it. But you know, I'm just so perfectionist that I'm going to try my hardest anyways to make it a perfect pattern, even if it is pretty hidden. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! What are you watching? What I've been watching, uh, all morning, since, since 2 a.m. when I got up, I've been watching Spider-Man and his amazing friends on uh, Disney Plus, and it's just, boy, it, let me just tell you right now, it reminds me a lot of He-Man. It, it's got all the same sound effects as, like, really old, like, He-Man and Scooby-Doo, and I'm pretty sure it's one of the guys in there, uh, Iceman, I'm pretty sure his voice is the same voice actor as Fred from uh, Scooby-Doo. It's like, wow, that is just the era where they all shared voice actors and they all shared sound effects. It was just, it's just really funny. Like, it's really a throwback. I mean, this is the first time I've seen it, but I'm highly entertained. I really love old shows. And obviously, I collect animation cells, so. I just wish I could get one of Spider-Man, but Spider-Man animation cells are very expensive and rare. <laughs> Maybe just expensive. Cheers. That's that's a name I've heard of, uh, a show name I've heard of, but I've never seen. Okay, so I kind of had a lot of tape going down on each toe, right? So what I'm doing now is I'm taking just like a strip and going around just this bottom piece, because now that now that I'm done taping up the foot, I just want to have a piece pieces of tape go all the way around the edge bottom to make sure that that's like very defined and uh that's that that edge piece is more important than you'd realize so you got to be really careful you don't want it to like hang down underneath like overhang but you don't want it to be too high either you just need it to get that perfect that perfect lineup so there we go i was just going to make a reference but nobody in the world would know what i was talking about but I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it anyways. Um, <laughs> see, it's not funny after you have to explain it, though. So, Lego Island, on that game, <laughs> they ask Pepper, Pepperoni, that's his name, because he delivers pizza, get it? They ask him what he's doing, and he says, My best! <laughs> Maybe I'll play that. Maybe I should play that. I have trouble getting old games running on my laptop, and I, that's like a common problem for a lot of people, but I still haven't, uh, I just haven't put on the time to, uh, try to figure out how to do that yet, so, um, I do have a lot of old games I want to play, but ain't nobody got time for that. Honestly, I think that's the worst trouble ever, like, all the people on the Discord, I love them all, all the people DMing me, people asking questions and 
just saying hi and asking how I'm doing. I mean, that's awesome. That is so awesome. I love all you guys. I love all my friends. However, <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that. Like, I just, I just don't have time for everything I need to do in the day. It's crazy. My family and home life is very chaotic just because, uh, at least recently, everybody is getting sick and everybody needs me. Like, I, I'm the only one that can help a lot of the time because I'm the one that's, uh, well, <laughs> I'm, the, I'm just the only one that's around that has the ability to help. Other people have, like, jobs that they have to physically go into work, and, um, I mean, my brother's too young to drive, he can't do much to help the family, so, you know, when people are sick in your family, you gotta step up, you gotta help, and you just, you just do what you can, you know, but your family always comes first, your family and your friends, any, and, I mean, as much as I love sewing and commissions and uh to playing overwatch lol i mean you know your family is so important so this keeps trying to rotate so i'm gonna use my foot to hold it still uh, all right hold still there we go anyways yes i've been quite quite the busy person but that's okay I'm tricking myself to telling- I'm telling myself that things are slowing down. I'm trying to stream more and, uh, yeah, basically that's it. I'm trying to stream more. <laughs> trying to finish up my commissions. Just trying to get everything done that I gotta do on the checklist. And it's okay to be busy. It's- it's very stressful, but being busy is kind of a good thing. That means- you have a lot of talents and people really need your help. I mean, that's that's cool. That's cool when people want you to help them with something for their, for your skill. Like imagine imagine if nobody wanted me to help them with anything. Like I would just sit in my room all day and be bored. <laughs> it's 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 like it's it's fun helping other people do stuff. Like if they have to move I mean, it's fun helping them move their stuff. I mean, if even if it's something simple like feeding the cats every day, it's like, it's, it's a chore, but if you don't do it, it's like, what, what else are you gonna do your whole life? You're just, you're just gonna sit around and do nothing. It's just boring. <laughs> Me telling everybody how much fun work is, even though I'm, uh, I'm an artist. <laughs> Which is arguably the most fun job you could possibly have. Yeah, I have never seen Cheers. I only know the name of the show. I've never... I don't know anything else about it. <laughs> You've been taking care of your roommate's cat last night into today. Oh! Cats are just amazing, okay? I love cats. I love animals, man. But cats, cats are just 10 out of 10. What an awesome animal, right? All right, so right now what I'm doing is, uh, since I finished taping this up, I, I'm actually starting to draw on uh, pattern stuff. So first things first, I know exactly where the toe has to be. So I'm trying to uh, pattern out the toe area. So, normally, I would draw a line right in between these two toes, because I would need to cut the toes out. But, uh, since I did that with the tape, it's already separated, I don't need to cut it. So, I don't even have to- there's nowhere to draw the line. There's no tape there. So, uh... Yeah, this part, also just do your best to try to save as much of the detail as you can. On the- on the- oh, look at it, I missed a spot there. Alright. Ah! Whenever the camera falls, I like to imagine it as, like, everybody watching is just falling. Like, <laughs> like, I dropped the audience. Oops. I don't know why that's so funny to me. It's just the whole audience is falling because I knocked the camera over. So dumb. Okay. 
There we go. Let's try this again, yeah. There we go. See, if I didn't push this tape down into the shape, I wouldn't have known where this line would have needed to be drawn. Like, it's hard to keep tabs on where the shape is supposed to go. You, so you just gotta do your best to try to, uh... Like, within the different layers of moving stuff around, it's like... Let me explain. I mean, you have, you have the foam, right? You built the foam. Then on top of that, you have the tape layer, or like the, uh, the saran wrap, then the tape, which goes into the pattern, which you trace to the pattern, and then you sew together, and then it goes back on the foot. You gotta glue it in place. It's like between all of those steps, this little pattern is gonna get shifted and sh changed that whole time. So what you gotta do is you have to be as diligent as humanly possible to try to keep that pattern from changing if that makes sense. Because it's gonna want, the, the pattern's gonna change over time no matter what you do, so just try your best to make sure it doesn't. I hope that makes sense. Um, okay. Cool. I was just checking this, so if you did it like me, you have slits already between these toes. If not, you should draw a line there. I have lines going all the way around each of these, all the way down the side of the toe. So I know exactly where the toes are. That's true. Indigo has been taking a lot of time. I've had a lot of stuff half finished for him. Like, I've had wings sitting in the back forever, but I just never furred them. And, you know, I had to build that pattern from scratch. So lots of, lots of pattern making, lots of things that I've done are just were kind of half done. And I'm just... I'm so happy because right now, all of that half-done stuff is finally coming together, and I'm just, ooh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to see Indigo. He's just, uh, he's ready, he's ready to be born. This part, the, the bodysuit part, is one of my favorites because it only takes a few days. Like, seriously, like, honestly, only a few days to make a whole bodysuit. It's like the head that takes a long time and, um making new patterns, like, if I, I, I did have to make a new feet paw pattern, because he's, he's got a bigger foot than me, I had, so every new pattern I have to make takes a long time, because I have to, like, do all the little tweaks, make sure it looks right, but, uh, yeah, all that, all that prep work, honestly, took so long, <laughs> but you're right, it's gonna be a lot easier after, uh, after the boy is done, um, cool, all right, so now we're actually gonna look at the the pattern, um, the character design itself. So let me grab that on the monitor. I still can't get the screen share to work properly, so we're gonna do it the, uh, the dumb way, where I hold it up to the screen. Uh, here we go, okay. Oh, shoot, I forgot to post on, uh, <laughs> okay, I wrote out a whole Discord thing saying, like, I'm streaming and stuff, and then I forgot to send it, so... Oops! I'm dumb. Wow, when was the last time I had the camera up here? Like, I, I've been on the flo floor a lot lately. <clears throat> Alright, here we go. This just feels right, you know? I got the, got the threads in the background, Spongebob's watching me. Here's Mr. Wolf's... <laughs> Avengers shows up! It's 9.30 in the morning. <laughs> Seriously, it's... I don't know why I'm awake, and I'm probably gonna go to bed on granny time again, like, super early. Oh, that's helpful. Okay, at least you get notified on Twitch. That helps. Um, okay, let me pull up this design. Oh, yeah, so, last stream, I, I dropped the, uh, uh, some, <laughs> one of the glue guns on my hands, and I burned myself, but the good news is I have Paw Patrol band-aids, so at least I have to, at least I can be entertained by those. Oh, come on, focus. I want everybody to see my Paw Patrol band-aid. Come on now. Come on, camera, show them. Oh, that's depressing, okay. It's Rocky. Wait, is his name Rocky? I mean, I'm all confused. Now I have to look it up. Paw Patrol. I remember Sky and Chase's name, but I kind of get the other ones confused. I think Rocky's a bulldog. No, it is Rocky, yeah. The, the green... The, 
Yeah. <laughs> he is Rocky. Then which one's the bulldog? The bulldog is... Rubble. <laughs> what the heck? Rocky and Rubble? Why are they so close? <laughs> Paw Patrol! <laughs> I really like Paw Patrol, okay? I just really like the designs. Okay, we're gonna try this again. Okay, okay, I really like the designs. Rocky looking at me like that honestly makes my burn feel better. <laughs> I, 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 I'm really, it's, it's ridiculous. I know it's ridiculous. Like, the patterned band-aids, like princesses and stuff, they do cost a little bit more than standard tan band-aids, but I'm serious. They make me happy when I get a boo-boo. <laughs> I know, I'm stupid. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I know it's ridiculous. But it actually does make me happier. Okay, so here's our beautiful design. Um, This is Indigo. And I've done the tail. I've done the hand paws. Uh, I already have prep work done on the wings. I just gotta sew it. Um, head's almost done. Well, I'd say like two thirds. And yeah, bodysuit. That's what we're doing now. So we need to make sure we get all these markings on the bodysuit, including the arms. Uh, I can't do the arms right now until I get more saran wrap, but uh, let's see. We already marked where the toes are, so that's good. So let's finish the foot. Because if you see right here, the foot, I mean, here's the toes, right? But it doesn't just end there. It kind of goes underneath too so we got to make sure we get this curve here so that's what we'll do first and then we'll mark this line here and then we'll move on to the rest of the bodysuit there we go back to the stream whoa all right jeez my hair is grown out i mean i like the brown but i like the blue better okay so, at this point, I'm marking the actual markings on the character. After the markings on the character are done, we'll worry about, uh, like, let's just say this is one color. Let's just say this is a dragon that is all white, 100% white. Um, you obviously are still gonna have to make some cuts and stuff to, like, actually make the shapes possible. So after we get the, uh, the pattern colored and drawn onto here, um, we'll put some extra cuts that we have to make to make this thing actually uh, be able to be sewn together. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So this is the part where I put the reference up on the screen. Um, <laughs> up there. And I, I look back and forth at it with my eyes between my dummy and the screen and I try to make sure I get the exact detail so I want to make sure that it's the same design that is on the character just gonna do the best I can and uh I guess I would start off with a pen because it's good to make your first marks like your first marks are probably not gonna be the right ones so I do pen first and then once I get it right, I'll get a Sharpie, and then I'll go over it with a Sharpie. Because there's been a lot of times where I started with Sharpie, and then it, I did the wrong lines, and I had to, uh, it made it very complicated. But if you do, if you do mess up, you have, like, Sharpie all over the foot or something, and, like, you have lines that are mis, mis, <laughs> misplaced lines, you can actually just put another, uh, layer of tape on top of that. Uh, and just cover up the mistake and then try again. It's, I mean, it wastes a little bit of tape, but you're already going through so much tape, you know? Hang on, I'm gonna read the comments. Ugh. Oh my gosh, that's so funny! What even? That's really funny. Paw Patrol is pretty cool, though. Like, I wouldn't... Pr I mean, I have I have just sat there and watched it before, but honestly, I the thing I like about it is the character designs. I mean, they're obviously... They're TV character designs. They're not the best thing in the whole world, but you know what? I think they're appealing. 
I mean, they're not the best thing, but I like them enough, and boy, howdy, that's enough for me to get a band-aid of it. <laughs> All right, so right now, what I'm trying to do is this foot, this whole foot apparatus, there we go, okay. This is all separated at this line right here, and it just so happens that indigo has white here that separates at this line, and then it's purple up here. So we happen to be very lucky. So I'm going to put the, like, this is where the zipper goes, right? To separate the foot from the bodysuit. So I'm going to make sure that the, uh, the line is exactly right in, in the line of where the purple and the white meet. Okay, right here. That looks good. So once I draw this on here with pen, if I like it, that's great. If I don't, you know, I just try again. And uh, if I make mistakes, I actually put tiny little X's through the line because otherwise I won't know. I, I, I don't know if it's a good line or a bad line or what. It helps, it helps me, personally. Like, see, okay, I just made a mistake here, so I'm gonna put a little X through that, that line that I made that was wrong. That way I won't try to follow it later, and then wonder why it looks bad, because it's the wrong line. Alright. <sighs> Let me check the stream again. See, I have to, I have to switch between the stream and the, uh, information. Oh no! <laughs> Well, that's cute. I literally, okay, actually, I still have the bowl in here, actually. I literally just ate a bowl of, uh, uh, Paw Patrol mac and cheese. So, <laughs> that's, that's where my funding is going. Paw Patrol mac and cheese. That, well, that's really cute. I did not get to see the movie, but I'm sure it was cute. I'm sorry, you're tired. Oh, yeah, go back, get some sleep. Thank you for saying hi, I appreciate it. It was good seeing you for a little bit. Oh, uh, there we go. Okay. Oof. Oh man, so getting these low parts are kind of hard. Like, I could take the dummy off the rack, right? Or I could just lay down and do it. It's like, pick your poison. Either way, it's going to be uncomfortable. There we go. So I need to make sure that the design looks right, and I'm already making a few mistakes trying to draw this. There we go. Cool, so it's got this nice curve here, so honestly that's it. Like, I'm just gonna keep drawing the design, and uh, when I'm done, um, well, I mean, I don't want to keep you guys waiting while I kind of do the busy work. I, I, I mean, I do a lot of busy work on the stream, but I don't want to do more than extra. So let's just pretend I drew all the, all of the, um, uh, all of the designs on here already. Like this part is the top of the foot. It's white. This is the toes. This part is purple. Um, so what do you do next? Like, well, let's start with the, the foot here. Yeah. The foot's pretty important. Alright. So, this is, depending on uh, how you did this or whatever, I mean, it's up to you, but where I like to place my claws is kind of, like, closer to the inside. Because if you ever see cat paws, it, is, it isn't, like, straight, like, fingers. They kind of, like, curve in together. Like, the, there's the two... And then the two on the outside kind of go, they're not straight, they go in a little. Like, cat paws are just so cute. They actually look like Spartan's hand paws, if you know what I'm talking about. But, uh, anyways. So the middle two here, this is where, I'm marking the line where the claws are gonna go. So the middle two, I, I like to put it directly facing forward. That's where I want the claw to be. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it, but if you want, you can measure it, like, from the center here. It's about an inch and a half. There we go. 
Okay, so now these ones. So this part, I mean, obviously it's rounded, but you want to make sure you don't stick the claw, like, coming out of the side of the foot. It looked really ridiculous. So um, that's why when I'm doing the claws, I like to line it up in a complete front view, and um, the claw would be about right here. This is where I would put the claw. And honestly, if you want, you can use that same measurement to put it over here. But I don't like to do that because, once again, like, the like if you look at any cat's claws or whatever, for example, uh, like, the two, the two in the center, and then the ones on the end kind of curve in like this. And that's what makes it have, like, that curving in shape. Um, let me just grab Spartan's hand paws. Honestly. <laughs> Okay, here. See? So, this these aren't just four straight fingers, you know? And even if, even if they were, we're looking at the claws right now. So, this is almost identical to what we're doing with the feet right now. But, that's why I went on to make sure these claws on the end aren't too far off on the side. If they're coming out on the side, it'll look awkward. So, um, yeah, you've got the two... There you go. You got the two center ones coming straight down, and then these ones kind of curve in a little, if that makes sense. So, we're just gonna do our best here with that, with that knowledge. Like, you can measure from here to, like, here and try to make it the same, but I seriously don't think that makes it end up looking its best. I think you just need to eyeball it and just do your best to make it look good without needing to measure it because I mean you can measure these two center toes you can measure to make sure they're the same but like don't use the measurement from here to here to like put here because this toe is different the end toes are different than the middle toes you'll get a completely different result but that being said if you want to measure this here to here um and then use that to make sure here to here is the same I mean, you could totally do that. Go for it. Okay, so here's our four claw marks. I hope they're visible. I know the lighting is kind of weird in here right now. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Alright, Spartan, your hand paw was very useful. Ugh, it fell. <laughs> Spartan's hand paw is just over there, like... <laughs> uh. Alright. So... That's, that's one of the markings you need to make sure you have before you cut it off. And, uh, one more thing. I like to... I have a claw pattern, okay? It's about this big. It's just, you know, it's shaped like a triangle, almost. I will hold it up to here, and, um, I'll actually mark the top and the bottom of where I want that to be. Like, I don't have my claw pattern on me right now. But, uh, if I held it up, it'd be about this tall. <sighs> Alright. Closer. There we go. So, there, I, you can see I marked the top and the bottom. And you do that for all four of them to make sure that that line, um, is the same height. You don't want to have, uh, a few claws being higher or lower than the other. It'll look jaggedy. So, I, that's what I use. I use this. You can measure it from the bottom. Uh, so all the claws can have the same height from the bottom. So this is about an inch and... Uh, yeah, about an inch and a half. So, from this toe up to here, and this one, and this one, you can measure that about the same same height. And just put the tick mark on the bottom of each four. So, yeah. And, uh, you actually don't need to do that on the other foot. Just, like, you know, because you could take this whole foot and mirror it over. Um. Because, you know, we're just making the pattern right now. Okay. Um. So next, what do you do? Okay, well, uh, I didn't expect this to be about the foot today, but I honestly, like, the foot is, like, one of the most complicated parts. Alright, so, you have, like, this curved hunk of, of a pattern, right? Like, I know that this toe, this curved toe, which goes down here even, that's part of the pattern, it's supposed to be purple. Well, this is round. How the heck am I gonna put it on a flat thing of fur? Um... So we are going to have to make some slits to make sure that this actually becomes round. 
So um, let's actually start with the middle toe. So because we marked where the nail is, that's actually where our seam is going to be too. So once you've marked the top and the bottom, um, you can actually continue this line all the way down and up because this is going to be the seam that you cut across. There we go. Up, up, up. All the way up. Alright, so most people can stop like, uh, like maybe like right here or so. It depends, like, when you, when you take this off and you try to flatten it out, um, this will probably be fine. But my, <laughs> this particular foot is so curved, I might actually have to cut, uh, two pieces for each rather than having just a, like a, a cut, like a, I don't know if that makes sense. Rather than having just like a cut that I can sew, it's going to actually be two pieces. But that's just because my pattern is so, so round. Like, <laughs> oops, it's round. So yeah, mine happens to go all the way up. But yours can probably stop at the top of the toe. But it doesn't have to. If you want to do two pieces for each side, you can. And so that mark in here, that top and bottom mark, that's where the claw's going to go. So once you take this pattern off, you know, you like shave the fur, you cut the two patterns out, and you sew it together. You're going to sew all the way across the line, skipping the claw, and then sew the bottom part of the line. Because then you can stuff the claw in there. I hope that makes sense, but honestly, I'm probably going <laughs> to... It's just like hand paws, but to be honest, I'm probably going to do it with you guys anyways, so... Yeah. <laughs> Knowing me, it's like... All right, give me just a second. See, like I, I wanna, I wanna teach and talk. Uh, <laughs> I, I wanna talk. Part of the trouble is that I also need to focus enough to make sure I'm doing a good job. There we go. Yeah, that's that's this over a little bit. Okay. Right now, I'm just having trouble making this claw positioning correct. Cool. Okay, so, yeah, um, I have a whole- come here, come here, camera. See, I have two lines here. One of them is, like, messed up, so I put little X's through it. It's kind of hard to see on camera. Alright, there we go. So that I know that this one that doesn't have X's through it is the proper line. So, uh, I'm not gonna mark the top and the bottom for all of these. I just did this one because for an example for you guys. But I don't have my claw pattern with me. Like, my little, my little tiny claw pattern. Normally I would hold that up here to mark, uh, the top and bottom for each one. I don't have it right now. Uh, I have to dig it up. But, uh, yours should not, by now should already have these two claw marks of how tall your claw is. So this end toe, um requires a little bit more effort because it is just so round so I would put the slit all the way up to here um, depending on how round your toe is I mean it should be fine to end the line here to end the slit here but uh like you know how this toe was so round I had to like the slit had to go all the way across basically this is two pieces but this one is gonna be a slit like it this this is fine to be connected there You want to get up and do stuff, but so much fun laying on the couch and just listening to you. What? <laughs> Ow! I'm shocked. I feel like I'm so boring. Like, I feel like I'm a public access TV show. Like, <laughs> that's so funny. But I'm flattered, really. Thank you. Alright, so, so for, um, actually, you know what? Indigo's paws are a great example of this. Honestly, feet paws and hand paws are so similar. Okay, so see these big round paws. These just big round bulbs. They're so flippin' cute. Um, how did we get this shape? Well, there's some slits in here. You might not be able to see it well on camera, but um, I'll try to explain it. So from here, like this is a flat piece right here. This is a flat piece. The other side, this bottom side, this is the rounded piece. 
and there is a seam that starts here and goes all the way up to here. And that's exactly like what we're doing here on this foot, starting here and going all the way up to here. Um, however, this pattern also has a second line going across this way, across the finger in the center. So that would be like going across here. And I think, um, I don't remember where I got that pattern. That was, uh, that one wasn't by me. It's, uh, was it Toothy Hounds? No. Cliff Suits? No. Oh, shoot. I can't remember the name. I'll put it in the description. Um, but yeah, the, they did that a little different. And it does give that round look, but it's not the, uh, uh, I don't think it's completely necessary, depending on your pattern. So instead of kind of doing like an extra side thing, I'm just gonna have one slit here and another slit here going down. So like, this part needs two slits because it's just so round. Like obviously one slit here in the middle, that's good enough. That'll, that'll do the job. But this one, this one piece that's so round, it just needs, it needs help. Let's see here. I'm gonna do it like, here yeah yeah that looks about right cool all right so it looks kind of weird looks kind of pointless but it's actually very important um so make sure make sure you mirror this to the other side too like the other side needs that extra slit too but uh i'm gonna do that after the stream on this side there's no reason you guys have to sit through me doing the other one too <laughs> it's a cozy kind of relaxation. <laughs> well, you know, that's 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 awesome. That makes me very pleased. I hope you're having a good time just chilling on the couch. You know, take it easy once in a while. It's good. Okay, um so something that you might be asking yourself if for some reason you're still here after this really long video. <laughs> um how do you know when you need a slit? Well, when there's a, there's a few reasons you might need to cut cut extra lines. One, the pattern changes. So like this toe is purple, this this foot here, the top of the foot is white. That constitutes a line that needs to be cut cuz obviously two different colors. Okay, uh what else constitutes? Well, maybe Maybe I have chest fur, right, and um, maybe they want the belly down here to be shaved, but they want this top area to be really floofy. Well, you can keep that as one big piece. It might be easier to shave if you just have these two separate pieces. So um, that, might, that might call for a, a, a slice here, and, you know, you can write a note on the top part, leave fluffy, and the bottom part, shave down, and... Um, yeah, so another reason you might need a line is, and this is, this is the main reason, because it's not something that's flat enough to use, it, to, to get out of a flat piece of fabric. So like a, a, a yard of fur is flat, yeah? You lay it on the floor or the table, it's flat. You can't make this nice round knee shape. There's gonna have to be some cuts somewhere to make this flatten out so that we can actually sew it back into this rounded shape. Um... So, how do you know when, wh where to put this? Like, I could put cuts here, 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 where do I put it? Um, first of all, start with your pattern. Like, um, Figby, my Figby, my boy, <laughs> my boy, <laughs> he has a different color right here. And this is kind of a good spot to put a seam, not only because it's good to separate the foot from the knee, but, uh, anyways, um, because right here, it, it gets kind of, uh, it's getting kind of bent, and, um, any, anywhere that you're not getting enough bend is a good place. I guess that was kind of a bad example. Um, all right, all right. Let's just say, all right, here we go. I have a good example now. Um, so start, start with looking at your pattern. Let's say this character has white knees. And, um, how do I, <laughs> I don't know how to explain this, yeah. Okay. Okay, 
wait, no, I got it. I got it. I got it. I swear. Okay. Let's say that this character has some pattern, like some swirl that goes across like this. Um, because there's like a swirly or some kind of pattern here, that actually solves some of your problem. Like if this was a standard character, all white fur, 100% white, that's a completely different situation than if you have something that has a lot of different patterns. Because if it has like a section here and a section here and a section here, um, you might not need to put some extra, extra seams in for the curves. I hope that makes sense. Like, um, I guess I'll just grab out Spartan's bodysuit. It's a good example. All right, it's still inside out. Cool. So here's Spartan's bodysuit. It happens to be inside out. Um, so the first thing I did on the dummy was I drew exactly the pattern. I drew the orange areas here. I drew the stripes. Then after that, I had to look at the area that was left. There was a lot of duct tape left that there was, it was on very round areas, like, uh, the part where it curves into the butt and, uh, the front of the knee, like, here's the center part. There's a lot of white here. So you gotta find the part where it's at the most extreme, and that's where you want to cut it. So, like, let's, let's just get started on Indigo's pattern, and then maybe it will make more sense. Cool, I like this. I need like a second picture or something. I'm gonna take a picture. I just need my second screen up, but my second screen is not currently functioning. Nothing to do with me being too lazy to plug it in or anything, nothing like that. Okay, so this is like the most stupid way to show you this ever, but we're doing it this way, sorry. All right, so here's our character. Um. So because of the shape of that, the knees right there, that's already going to take um, take off some of the seams that we're going to have to add just because there's going to be seams from changing the color. You're going to have to have seams there no matter what because it's going to be a different fabric. Um, so right here we have a seam. You probably can't see it. I haven't drawn it in marker yet because I want to make sure it's correct first. Um... Let's do, okay, get over there, Spartan. Let's do the front of the body. Also, if you have, like, a foot connected or something, um, and it's, and it's on a box because it's too short, don't let it dangle. If you let it dangle, it can, like, rip or stretch or malform your pattern. So always keep that box under that foot. Okay. So I'm sorry this is probably not very entertaining to watch, um... It's just me trying to, like, eyeball it and get this pattern here. So I'm going to try to mark where the blue and the purple start on, like, the chest and the legs. All right. My boy. I'm going to back him up as much as I can so you can see more on the camera. Fun. You're so funny, Avengers. <laughs> I mean, it, it works. Alright. So the camera. You get an upgrade. You guys get to be as tall as me. We're going up. This is an awesome camera stand, by the way. It can hold... It has an ad adapter to switch to grab on phones. Like, it's got, like, a, a grabber. If I want to put my phone, but it's also got the the attachment for webcams, which obviously I'm using that right now. It's super awesome. It's a really great thing. If anybody wants one, it's it's on Amazon for pretty cheap, like 20, 25 bucks. It's, it's pretty it's pretty good for what it is, really. Alright, so again, this is mirrored over, so I'm just gonna start on this side because I don't need to do the other side. This is a symmetry line. So I'm just going to kind of hold my design up and try to imagine it on here the best I can. Sorry, this part is going to be probably pretty boring. But yeah, I'm using pen at first because pencil will not work <laughs> on the duct tape that well. But uh, pen is 
pretty good because it draws just dark enough for you to see, but you can also go over it with Sharpie when you're done. Wow, is that really what my hair looks like? Why is it so fluffy today? I swear I didn't ask for this. All right. So it's got this curve. By the way, this is another reason why it's really helpful to learn how to draw first before you start getting into this. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think learning how to draw is super important. So if you, if you can't afford to make a fursuit yet, or if you're just, like, really nervous or something, I don't know. I, honestly, I think the best, the, bird, the best very first step to do when making a fursuit, seriously, I think is learn how to draw, at least a little bit. At least to a point, you know? I think that's super important. All right. So I'm trying to get to a certain point so I can explain more to you guys. It doesn't have to be perfect just yet. There we go. And the thing about this is, you can't always get it one-to-one -one with your design with your person's design like sometimes you have to uh take artistic liberty and you have to as the artist make certain decisions for the commissioner um some of which you can ask them and some of which you got to do on your own for example i was working on the wings and well i was i was, <laughs> I was looking at the wings i was i was thinking about the wings um for this for indigo yeah i mean here's here's his wings He's a good boy. Um, there's a lot of feathers on that, right? Like those, the primary feathers, the big ones, there's a lot of feathers. And the thing is, to have all those feathers, um, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to move the mic up a little closer. There we go. Okay, to have all those feathers would, I mean, we're trying to go for a wing size that's like about this big on each size, each side, not a huge huge wings. So for it to be a medium-sized wing, fitting 12 of those big feathers would make it really, really, really cramped and awkward looking. So for that, um, I had to ask the commissioner, commissioner? Yeah, commissioner, if it was okay if I actually made less feathers. So we're going to do about 9 or 10 instead. So that's, that's something that you can change that you should probably ask the commissioner about first. And, um, an example about something you just got to do on your own as an artist, your your own artistic liberty, it, that would be like something I'm doing right now. Like, um, I can't, I can't ask every single line. I can't say, how does this look? How does this look? How does this look? And send them a picture of every single line. But what I can do is use my art, artistic skill to do my, the best I can designing their character then afterwards I can show them, and they can say, say if it looks good or not. So that's that's an example of something that you don't ask the commissioner, um, where it's something where you just do your best on it. I hope that makes sense. Because <laughs> um, it's, not, it's not bothering to the commissioner. You ask them as many questions as you need to. Like, you ask them the important questions, but uh, it's just you don't want to ask, like about every single line, you know? It's kind of extra. All right. Hey. <laughs> so, this is the part where I stand back and I kind of look at it. Um, I think I might close the window. This might help you guys see better, honestly. It's kind of hard for you to see, actually, at all. Maybe I should just bring this closer? It's like, not, no, this is really not a very fun part to watch, because it's just me kind of drawing on the dummy, but I guess if you want, you could just listen to me in the background, or not watch. Oh, well, well. <laughs> um, I mean, you can, you can watch. I hope you're having fun. If you're not having fun, you don't have to watch. Um, yeah, this is just gonna be me working on this, and I'm just gonna be chatting with you guys, meanwhile. Okay, so this, this curve here... So you can see this part where it curves, like, the chest, like, the blue. That is something that's 
an artistic, uh, chat, um, an art hang on, I'll get back to you on that. Hi! <laughs> um, a digi for suit, it's, it's short for digitigrade, which means, uh, that's the kind of fursuits with the big stompy legs, the big feet. Uh, the other kind of fursuit would be plantigrade, where it's like this, where it's just one straight leg all the way down. So digi fursuits, they're a little bit more work, a little bit more expensive, but they have the cool, the cool digi leg, and they look way cooler. <laughs> yes! Yes! This is furry stuff. I've got some heads over here. Yup, yup, yup. I should have explained probably better. Hi! You found my furry channel! <laughs> if you're not a furry, that's okay. I think I'm gonna leave the window open. I like the window open. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. Some people aren't into the furry stuff, and I totally understand that. But I'm not, I'm not like a gung-ho crazy furry. I'm just an artist. I'm an artist that likes animals. That's actually how I got here, you know? Didn't expect to be doing commissions for, for a living, but here we are. Oh, yeah. Well... People like to make characters all the time, like, all kinds of stuff, but furries are just people who like to make characters of just, you know, animal characters, rather than people characters. I see a lot of human characters that are really cool, but... <laughs> oh no, you're fine! That's good, I like that you're not hating. I, I don't like haters, they make me sad. <laughs> That's cool, yeah. Um, it's hard to say. It's like, some people, I mean, some people grow up with, like, this is just one example. Like, say, say you grew up with, like, a German Shepherd, and it was, like, your best friend, and then, like, you know, it dies or something, and you just, you loved that German Shepherd. It was, like, you know, you, like, you, you grew li really close to it, and you, so you make a character, you draw, you draw a character that's a German Shepherd, and you're like, that's really cool, and that's your character now. And some people, like, just, people like to cosplay, so sometimes people make costumes of their characters. So, and then I've seen a lot of German Shepherds like that, just, and other, and other characters of people's animals, like, people dress up as parrots and stuff, just because they just love their, they love their pets, and I think that's really cool. Like, I love animals, and I think if you're gonna have some kind of character to make and dress up as, I mean, I've seen a lot of, like, Link and Zelda and stuff. Like, those are cool costumes, and I've seen a lot of, like, uh, custom character costumes. Those are cool, too. But my favorite is always the fursuit ones, because I love the animals. Those are my favorite. It's totally just a personal preference. We just, we just like animal characters. Some people go crazy, though. Some people are really crazy. Um, <laughs> let's just, let's just put that on the table right now. Some people go crazy. Um... But for the most of us, I'd say, like, 80% of us, maybe less, I don't know, 80% of us just like to dress up in our characters and take pictures together. And that's it. <laughs> I don't know why it's so fun, but, uh, just dressing up as your character, like, it's cool. There we go. I think I kind of like this shape. This, this, this is giving me trouble. Oh, you have any bad experiences from furry reputation? Actually, just, not really, but I did have one. So, um, people, people who don't understand furries, they're just like, okay, there's those weirdos that wear costumes and frighten children, and sometimes they're like, really scary, shady, weird, weird, weird people. And just because of that, um, that's, that's all my mom had heard. She didn't know about... People just like to dress up as their characters and take pictures and just make friends. Like, <laughs> she didn't know that it was- most people are just like that. She just only knew about the weird, weirdo people side of it. And so she was like, what are you getting into? I'm kind of scared. And I was like, oh mom, it's not like that. <laughs> so, because of the reputation of the bad people, um, I had to explain it to my mom. It's not like that, you know? We're just people that have fun and we love animals. <laughs> I know, it's just, I mean, that's what you think, yeah, right, well, that's awesome, 
I'm, I'm glad you're not a hater. <laughs> we've dealt, we've dealt with, I've dealt with some people like that online. I usually just ignore them because either they don't understand it, like, why the heck are you dressed up like an animal, or why do you have an animal character when you could have a human character to roleplay with or something? It's like, I don't know, I mean, werewolves are really, really cool, you know? Like, if you can make a werewolf character and that's not a furry, that doesn't make s- Like, you're, you know what I mean? It's like the, the line between normal characters and furry characters, I just- It's- 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 <laughs> It's a confusion thing. I don't know. There's no, like, true right way to do it. To explain it. I mean, I just do my best to explain it. <laughs> oh, hi, how you doing? You got stock statures? Really? I mean, that sounds like kind of fun. Um, fun in the way, like, washing dishes is fun. Oh! Ah, I'm falling over. Alright, right after I made fun of you, I fell over, so I guess I deserved that. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad you're having fun with that. Hi! Oh, uh, Zane. I think it's Zane? Yeah, Zane. Hi, Zane. You get to see my hair today. <laughs> Everybody gets to see my hair that needs to be re-dyed. <laughs> wow, does it really look like that in the back? Why do I have, like, a third part? Okay, don't look at my hair. <laughs> that's the new rule. Just don't look at my hair. And we'll be good. Alright, so I can show you guys, for the new people who just came in, what we're doing here. This is our, uh, this is Indigo, our character that we're working on. So I'm just kind of drawing on the markings to try to, um, <laughs> draw on the markings. I mean, you need the markings. So right now I'm actually working on the, the blue on the leg. See, the thing is, the blue there, that could be the inside thigh, like, in here. Um... I'm blocking the camera. That could be in here, or it could be the front. So, looking at the different views of the camera angle is really, really important. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying my best. <laughs> Addicting to watch. Ah, oh, yes, the stocks. <laughs> okay, the last time I heard anything about stocks was when somebody was... Okay, this is going to be the most obscure thing ever. I watch a lot of... Uh, like, video game, video game people, people who talk about video games and stuff, um, somebody was playing, what was it, Superman for <sighs> Commodore? I think it was Commodore, and it was, like, about the stock market, like, the first level was about the stock market, and I was like, really? <laughs> what is this game? I just thought that was so weird. Like, imagine... You're playing Superman, and it's, like, talking about stocks, and you're like, boy, this is a fun game! <laughs> you know, like, okay, stocks in real life, that has real weight to it, but, like, stocks in a video game, I can't see that catching on. That's amazing, right? <laughs> but your family thinks it's weird, because it's how uh, TV shows... Yeah! Okay! <laughs> so, years ago... Like, I'm talking, like, four years ago, maybe. Um, I saw... <laughs> wow, I have two stories about this. Alright. Um, I saw on TV, there was a show about, like, uh... Which story do I tell first? They're both good. Um, it was talking about people who are, like, weird and do weird things, and they're, like, these people, they dress up as dogs, and, and they go out in the forest, and they think they're real wolves. And I was, like... <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> and that day, that day, as soon as that came on TV, I knew the reputation of our, our, uh, our family of friends, our fandom here, was just going downhill. That was just not good. Um, I'm having trouble, I'm having trouble getting, getting this shape right. Sorry, it's just, I'm going kind of slow. I'm doing my best. But, yeah, like, um, so on the show, it showed people... It showed two guys in wolf masks. They were pretty low quality. Like, um, they weren't, they weren't, like, maker-made. They looked, like, handmade. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm just trying to explain the situation. And, um, one of them had feet paws. And they were just kind of stomping around in somebody's backyard. And, uh, one of them was howling, like, oh, And 
whoever was filming was like, they really think they're wolves, and they're hunting together, and I was just like, oh my god. So first of all, <laughs> first of all, this is called role play. If you want to role play, or, or live action role play, it's fun. It's, it's something you do for fun. Second of all, they do not think that they are real live wolves. They do not think that they're actually that. Unless they're crazy. They're, they're, it's, it's possible. I've seen some crazy people. But they really, they don't think, most of them, don't think that they're actually animals. Like, it's, it's all pretend and it's all in the name of fun, you know? So, just, it just really irked me. It made, it made me sad because people, you know what I mean? <sighs> so what I'm trying to do is I have this image. I'm actually trying to flip it, because sometimes when I'm having trouble with a pattern, uh, flipping the image over helps a lot. However, I can't freaking <laughs> figure out how to do that on my phone, because I'm kind of stupid, so, um, let's see here. Yeah, I'm having real trouble with this. But yeah, people who have cameras, they just kind of take us out of context, like, Role play is a thing for a lot of people. I mean, we were just talking about Renaissance festivals earlier. It's not just furries who do role play. And I'm saying, like, if you role play, if you li live action role play is like a werewolf, I mean, how come that would be okay? But as soon as you make it like a cute, costumed, fluffy, stuffed animal, then that's like, oh, you're a furry, you're weird. It's just, uh, the, where's, the, where's the line, you know? I just don't understand why people are kind of, they kind of do their best to make other people seem weird. And, come on, pen. Don't die on me now. I mean, I have, like, 80 pens, but... Alright. Pen switch. Oh, yeah, the other story. <laughs> there are people who think they're animals, but there's a distinction. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's what I was trying to explain. Thank you. Yeah, it's true. There are. <laughs> They exist, um, that's, yeah, that's a completely different thing. I don't really have much to comment on that. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> they exist, though. Okay, so I'm trying to get this shape just right, and I'm, honestly, honestly, I'm struggling with this shape, and it's not, it's not because I can't do it, but it's because I'm half-focused. So, honestly, I'm kind of wondering if I should just stop streaming and focus on this, but let me, let me give it, let me give it one more college try. We'll see how I can do. I'll try one more time. If I'm still having trouble, then I might have to just finish after, um, finish patterning it after I stream, because I want to make sure I do it right. That's the most important thing, like, you don't want to deliver somebody's character and it be all messed up, like, that's so sad. So yeah, my, my Dungeons and Dragons character, I mean, I, I kind of have two, but uh, the main one I've been using right now is a werewolf. I mean, it's a homebrew, a homebrew class, because there's not an actually, like a, not actually like a werewolf character, but, um, a uh, race, werewolf race. There's not a werewolf race, but I've been having a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Alright, so I 100% can get this shape, but, um... I don't want to do it when I'm streaming. I want to make sure I do it right. Uh, but you guys, you guys get the gist of it. I kind of messed up up here a few times when I was trying to find the correct line. So, uh, the fix for that, obviously, either, you know, when I go over, like, that's where I started in pen, right? So that when I get the right line, which is right here, I can go over it with Sharpie, because Sharpie's much brighter. And if it's just really, if it's too distracting, then I'll slap another piece of tape on top of it to cover. So that's what you do if you make a mistake. Um, okay, but so, this whole piece right here, like if this was just one white fursuit, it would just be, I would need to cut it somewhere. And where would I cut it? Well, I would cut it on the arms. I would cut it like right here. Um, this part, the shoulder is very round, so I would cut it here and here, probably, and make a separate, yeah, here and here, two lines I'd cut, so you have a top piece, and then the start of the front and back piece, um, 
I would, this whole front piece is probably fine, uh, if you wanted to, wow, camera's really close, um, this whole square up here is probably fine, but when it starts to curve, you might need to add some more lines in there. Basically, um, any part that's really, really curved, you need to make sure it lays flat, and if you can't lay it flat, then you need to put a slit in there, or at least mostly flat, it's be mostly flat. So for the knee, if this was an all-white fursuit, um, I would probably start by putting a slit, like I'd, uh, now the camera's too high, uh, I would put a line, first I'd put a line around the whole leg, like right here, then I would put a line, like coming down right here and here, kind of make a square of this top piece that goes right here, like a square, and then make a separate square for down here, this, this bottom piece. I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm gonna take the camera down. Whoa! See this? This is really awkward camera. Okay. So yeah, I would put a slit, like a, a line here and here and here, so you can make this one big flat square. And then this piece here, that could be a flat square. And the sides, um, this is really hard <laughs> with this camera that the stand is either all the way extended and then it's too short. Like I keep putting it up and down. I can't just, I can't just decide in a camera angle, can I? Okay, so, so for this foot, I mean, I pro I have a few colors, uh, colors and designs that go across here. So I might not have to put uh, any relief cuts, but uh, I know that this whole heel is one color, and that's that's definitely curved like this. That's not gonna flatten out. So I'm probably gonna cut this into a few different pieces. Um, so honestly, uh, wherever you can't, wherever you can't make it flat, or at least mostly flat. You're gonna need to add some uh, relief cuts, like a few snips, like we did with the toes. Um, or you're gonna have to add, like, just a full-on straight, an extra line, like a brand of whole cut. The other, okay, so the other one I saw on TV, um, to me just going on about it again. Well, I'm, well, I'm adjusting this camera, I'm just gonna... Okay, so here, here, this is the, uh, this is the line right here. This is the relief cut here. I have one here and I have one here because this is a very, very round piece, kind of like the knee. So there's, there's a lot of, a uh, lot of curvature and a lot of, um, tension in this. So if you try to lay it flat, it won't. So that's why we put, that's why we put cuts. Were you ever in geography? like young young class geography and you're like your teacher shows you the the example of how you can't have a map of the earth and then lay it flat like because the earth is a sphere right and you can't like lay it flat unless you kind of cut it up and then they show you like the orange peel example yeah <laughs> so the orange the orange peel example that's exactly what i'm talking about right now um how you have to kind of do some extra cutting and finagling to try to make that flat. I hope I explained it enough. I mean, I feel like I over-explained it, but I guess it's better than under-explaining. Sorry. <laughs> okay, um... Shoot, well, let me, let me... I do have to tell that other story, but let me say one other thing first. So, let's say... I marked the claws, which I did. I marked the spot for the claws earlier. I have lines here. So I have, I have, uh, let's pretend I have the whole design drawn on there. Any stripes, any color changes, any, any fun stuff like that. Spots, whatever. Let's just pretend it's all drawn on there. Um, then that's the, then this is the part where you start drawing relief cuts. Like, uh, like I said earlier. So, um, do that. <laughs> If you're not sure, like, you don't want too many scenes, but you don't want too few. If you have questions, you can send me a picture or two or Discord message me. I'll help you if I can. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else to explain it other than just saying send me a picture and I'll help. Um, but yeah, so once you have all that, um, now here's the part where... Ugh. Okay. 
So here's one of my Sharpie cups. It's in a Back to the Future mug because I think that is just the best, the best live action film series of all time. Um, when I draw the markings, like the character markings, like I like to you go over it again, like right now, like I drew everything with pen. So go over the markings with the blue, okay? Um, then, then do the relief cuts. I'm sorry I forgot to tell you to mark it with Sharpie first. Then do the relief cuts, any extra, um, cuts that you need to make sure that this thing lays flat. Um, and once you got those in proper spot and you like how they go, uh, I, I put those in red. And then, if there's any other, um, if there's any adjustments that you have to do, which happens a lot, honestly, <laughs> after it's marked up, sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, this is totally off. Um, that's, I saved the black Sharpie for that, because it, it'll, it'll, it's brighter than the others, it'll outnumber, in, it's just in pigment alone, it'll bright, it'll be brighter than the others, so if you have to make any adjustments, that's a good color. Um, I've also used orange before, orange is good because it's not super dark, uh, for, for like, uh, patterning or whatever, but yeah, sorry I forgot to tell you that, so first do the markings, and then trace over it with blue or whatever color you want when you're done if you like how it turned out and then uh do the relief cuts and the extra cuts go over it in red or whatever color and then check it for anything that you might have missed and uh send take lots and lots of pictures and send it to your uh your client <laughs> or you know just take pictures for yourself um just in, just, just, because if you, okay. After you do this, like, leave the room for a minute, go take a breather. When you come back, like, five minutes later, you'll have fresh eyes, and you'll be able to see anything that you messed up on. So, if you, if you're having trouble, like I was earlier, I mean, that's because my attention is kind of split between streaming and working on this, but, uh, <laughs> if, if you, if you're having trouble, or whatever, just give yourself a break, because when you come back, it'll give you a fresh, uh, mind, and you'll be able to see mistakes that you didn't see before. So, um, th that's another thing that you can do, is if you also, if you look at it from far back, or if you take pictures of it and look at the pictures, that will help you catch mistakes. So, that's, that's why I like to take pictures. <laughs> um, and that's why I have some, lots of mirrors in this room. Um, okay, so the next thing, um, you want to make sure you have the direction of the fur down. So, uh, I mean, I've got, a, I've got like multiple cups of Sharpies. I've got every color under the sun, but uh, it, it really doesn't matter what color you choose. But you do need to put an arrow for which direction things go. So, see, I'm not ready to mark up this yet. I, I can't, really, can't really show it. Ugh. But I know that this, this chest piece... Um, this is a good example, but I'm gonna have to, <laughs> I'm gonna have to make the camera stand tall again. I'm sorry. Here we go. Okay, so there's, there's, there's a lot of fursuit makers out there, and it's really, I think it's really nice when they, uh, share information around, like, I mean, everybody wants to make fursuits. I, I, I think they're awesome. It's a, it's an art form, really, and it, I, I do think trade secrets are okay, but personally, I prefer to just, uh, teach everything I know to other people so that we can all enjoy having a fursuit. So, um, I'm just, I'm just one of the handful of, uh, fursuit makers that are trying to teach you how to do stuff. So if you don't like the way I do stuff, um, I don't, it's not, I don't want to send you away, but I am telling you there, there are other makers that can, uh, that give you different ideas, too. Like, uh, other makers have ideas that I've never thought of, and vice versa. Like, we can help each other out, and we can help other people out, too. It's just awesome. I just love it. Okay, so... Um, what I do here... Mm, there we go. Okay. So, this tape line right here, this is, uh, what I mentioned earlier, like... If you didn't draw the line of symmetry, you, you have to do that with the marker so that you know exactly where to cut. But, uh, you know, I did that with this tape. So the tape here is actually right on the edge of the line of symmetry. Um, 
So I can just ignore that for now, but this center section right here, this belly, the fur goes down this way. So after you uh, trace the edge, like once you get all the markings and stuff, um, and this, this is the part where you, uh, well first you wanna take a picture, send it to your commissioner before you put all this writing all over it and make it a little bit crazy. Um, but then after that, you wanna take, put arrows everywhere. So the fur on the chest, um, it goes down. So, believe it or not, uh, <laughs> I mean, fur is pretty, I mean, it hides mistakes pretty easily, so if it's a little bit angled the wrong way, it probably doesn't matter. But I would still do the best you can to get that perfect arrow angle. If you mess it up, don't worry about it. Just scribble it out or cover it up with a piece of duct tape and try again. Um, for pieces that are symmetrical, like a symmetry, this is very rare. The only things that, the only part you can literally flip over is like the, the chest and the back and maybe the crotch. But right here, this line, I'm actually gonna make a, I'm actually gonna um, make a few arrows here. Because when I'm working on the arms, those are two separate pieces, right? But when I'm working on this one particular chest piece, that's one piece I could do. I could cut it in half. I could do it as two pieces. But it's like, why? It's right here in the middle. You can mirror it. So um, that's, that's something you can do. So if you want to mirror this front chest part that's flat, you can. So I always put some little arrows here and I write mirror. Um, so that I know when I cut the pattern out that this is this is a side that I can mirror so it'll just come out as one big piece rather than two that I have to sew together so that's a good that's a good tip I only use that on like the chest and the back because uh, may, maybe the crotch because there's nothing else there's no other symmetry line that's it you know what I mean I, I hope that makes sense <laughs> um okay so you've written well let's talk really quickly about the the arrows of the fur. Um, so which, how do you know which direction the fur goes? Okay, um, you just gotta really, you gotta, you gotta think about it. Most of the time it's pretty self-explanatory. So like, right here, you, you do need a cut on the arm, like right here. Um, so the arm fur is gonna go down this way, like straight down the arm. Um, the shoulder, that shoulder piece, it's gonna go this way. Like, straight down the shoulder, straight down. Um, the chest, you know, straight down. Um, and that's that's actually going to go for every other piece, too. But when you, when you have all these round pieces, it gets a little bit more confusing. But uh, don't worry, um, fur, is pretty, fur is pretty forgiving if you get some angles kind of off. But still do your best to try to make it kind of, uh, all, that, all the arrows kind of flow down to this center piece. Um... Cause yeah, it does it does get a little bit weird in this big curved knee, but it's not that bad. You can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> um, if you if you wondered if you're worried about it, like if you're worried about the the arrows being too off, just have your friend come and have a friend come and look at it and say, okay, that one looks really tilted or something. They can help you out. Who's that? Oh hi. <laughs> How you doing? I love that face, by the way. <laughs> That's one of my favorites. <laughs> Um, let's see. So the tail, the tail on the back. Okay, now this is something that we're going to talk about another day. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I I'm going to get back to that in like three minutes. First, I want to talk about, uh, the neck. I'm going to talk about the neck first. So remember how I said earlier, you want to make sure that the neck is not huge. Like, you don't want it to be, like, a gaping, huge hole here. So you want the neck to be relatively small. Because, remember, there's going to be a zipper on this on the front or the back somewhere. They're going to be able to get it in, in it. And people's necks aren't that big, right? So even if they have a big head, they're not going to have a huge neck. So, um, yeah. If you have somebody send you the duct tape dummy, or if you're making one, try to mark exactly where you would want that collar line because it really helps your maker out. They know exactly where to put the collar then. Um, okay, now let's talk about the foot. Uh, 
Oh, see now the stand is too tall again and I'm just suffering. Okay. Okay, the foot. So we already marked uh, where the toe line, uh, the, the claw lines go. And they should be the same height. Like, measure from the bottom. Make sure that it's the same uh, amount of risen up, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, and then you want to draw the arrows going. So, I don't have... Okay, this is fine. I'm going to put this here anyways. So, this goes straight down like everything else. So, the arrow here would actually be like this um like that it like it follows directly down that line but the thing is this line this is the line you're gonna cut right so when you when you cut it and it opens up and it lays flat it'll be kind of like this um like yeah it'll lay flat into like two pieces like this so this is enough information for me because I, I have half the arrow and I know exactly the line here um, so this is what I do for the toes. I just follow the line, and that's my arrow. But, uh, it's hard to explain, but if you put an arrow on the left and the right side here, um, then when you open it up, it's like this, and you have, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, <laughs> alright. I'm just gonna draw on myself. There we go. Okay. So let's say I drew two down arrows on either side of this. Okay. And not in the middle. It was just on either side. And it looks like this. There's the down arrows. Okay. Um, but this is curved. As soon as I take it off and I lay it flat, suddenly these two arrows, um, are facing different directions. It's not straight anymore. Like this one's going out this way. This one's going out this way. So... What do you do? Do you follow this one or do you follow this one? Well, you need to go right in the middle. Otherwise, the fur will be going this way or the fur will be going this way. You need to go straight down the middle. So having the arrow on this side or this side is like really pointless. Just put the arrow in the middle and uh, alternatively, you could just put the arrow like at the top up here after after that cut off. Like, uh, like here's here's the seam that goes all the way up after the seam ends at the top you can put it up here put the little arrow but i just i tend to put it here um that's where i like to put it i'm sorry that was really confusing uh it's kind of a, i i give a lot of details that are totally unnecessary and that's i think that's like my one my I, my <laughs> it's my problem but also my one good thing like it's the people people watch my channel maybe because uh maybe because i'm giving cool information but i do talk a lot so sorry oh no i'm so scared of the needles like uh like i haven't i haven't gotten the vaccine yet but it's not because i don't want to it's just because i'm so scared i've had a phobia since i was a kid and it's like the only time I've actually almost passed out. <laughs> uh, like, I, I mean, I don't, I don't have anxiety attacks, uh, like my sister does, but, like, that's the only time I ever get really, really hypered up and get terrified. So maybe one day I'll get that, but, uh, <laughs> anyways, I'm, man, I'm sorry you don't feel right. I mean, you'll be good soon, but for now, I'm really, I'm sorry. I know that's not good. Um, a lot of people kind of feel ill the first few days, I think, but it's just unnecessary evil. Maybe I'll bring Mr. Woofs and I'll go get the shot. Like I, I just gotta bring, I gotta bring my buddy. Then maybe I'll be brave enough. <laughs> oh, even just thinking about it is getting me kind of antsy. Uh, I just said I don't have panic attacks, but you know, like that's the one thing that can give me one. Okay, so we got the arrows, right? We put the arrows now, of which direction the fur goes. And, um, I mean, everything is mostly self-explanatory. Like, the top of the foot, obviously, put that down directly going towards the center of the toes. Um, yeah, yeah. 
The face gets a little bit more complicated, and I'll just mention it really quickly because I'm here. Um, oh no! Camera! <laughs> but he gave up. You're right, he did give up. Mr. Wolf's gave up. Okay, I was really tired, and I was just like, I'm gonna make this video now. <laughs> that was just an extra ridiculous video. I'm so glad you were there to see that live when he just gave up. Alright. See, I'm not a total idiot. I, I, I learned how to fix... Like, I... I, I <laughs> I haven't learned a lot of stuff about string, but I am learning how to fix cameras and stuff when they mess up. Yeah! <laughs> okay, so, uh, click, uh, a quick 101 on which direction the fur goes on a head. Um, okay, so start with the neck. Uh, come here, bandana. Okay. Fur goes straight down on the neck. Just straight down. Even on the shoulder, it goes straight down this way. Even on the back of the head, it's straight down. Um, and the ears, this ears piece, um, it might be in multiple pieces, but no matter what, each piece needs to point up towards the very tip of the ear. Um, hair tuft, obviously, you know. Um, now this shorter fur usually actually doesn't really matter that much because once it's this short, it doesn't really matter which direction it faces, but it's still kind of, you still want to make it face the right way. Like, it, it does look better overall. So usually this front piece, this, this piece right here, I usually have it face up, like this, towards the head. And then, right here, the top of the eyebrow, I actually have that continue to go up into here. And the way Figby's hair tuft is, it's it's like on there, but it's like tied very loosely so that it can flop around. Uh, so if I move it out of the way, you can kind of see right here, that's that line where it's the difference between the, the eyebrows and the back of the head fur. So that's the part where it goes back in this part. I mean, they, they all go back. I mean, this goes back also, but you know. <laughs> um, the cheeks, okay. So this is, this is a hard one to explain. Um, first of all, the muzzle, I've, I've done both. I've had it go down towards the muzzle. I've had it go up. Um, my favorite so far is having it go up because it just flows a lot better, but you can have it go either way. Um, same with this. I, this one, I've seen people put, put the arrows going down, but I've been putting it going back this way. Every piece, I have it kind of going back. And uh, that's been working really well for me. And the jaw also goes back this way, but it, it also goes down more at an angle. Like, it kind of... See, I've seen people put the arrows where it's like the fur is facing towards the nose, towards the jaw. Um, but personally, I I prefer to have it uh, just all going back towards the back of the head. Um, I think that explains all of it. If you want, I mean, you can, yeah, I mean, I think that explains the head. I just kind of wanted to throw that in there. Sorry. I talk a lot. I, <laughs> I was trying to say, that's like my one, the merit of my channel is that I talk a lot, but it's also the bad thing, but it's also a good thing. So it's like, if you want to, if you want to watch another maker who is like, they make like edited videos that are like, you know, short. I mean, go ahead, but if you want the step-by-step, -step, I guess that's my job. <laughs> um, I do! I do have bold and brash! <laughs> More like, belongs in the trash. Isn't that right, Mr. Wolves? <laughs> I'm so glad you noticed. I'm actually wearing my Spongebob socks today, too. I love Spongebob. I should have worn the Spongebob socks with the Spongebob pants. That would have been ideal. Okay, so, at this point, you have put the arrows on. Uh, next step, what you want to do is, um, label every piece, every single piece. So, uh, let's say the arm is cut off here, and let's just say, uh, see, I don't have Figby here. Figby has a green arm, 
but there's a few stripes. It goes uh, green to here, and then it's a yellow stripe, back to green, and then a yellow stripe, and back to green. So it's one whole green arm except two stripes of yellow. So for each piece, I have to label that. So I would say this would be the main arm, like, and this can be just one round piece, like a tube of fur, which will end up being like a big square, just like a big square that ends up being wrapped around. So if you are trying to pattern that, uh, you just, if this is one color, you just need one line all the way down. And I'd, I'd probably put it on the underneath because it, it hides better underneath rather than on the top. Um, if you have to put seams, you know, put them somewhere, if you can help it, put them somewhere less noticeable, like under the armpit, like under here, <laughs> if that makes sense, rather than like, um, okay. I don't know how I forgot to mention that earlier. Try to hide the seams. Oh no! <laughs> You're colorblind, so you, you missed the stripes. You know, are they still not on there? Because I didn't even notice if they weren't. <laughs> like, the reason those are on there, like, persona explaining time. Man, furries love to explain their fursonas. Um, the reason Figby has those stripes is because varsity jackets are my favorite jacket ever. I wear varsity jackets every day. Just, I don't know, man. I don't know what it is. I like the way they flap over at the top. I like... I like the stripes, I t <laughs> so I incorporated that into my fursona's design, and that's why he's got stripes. But that's, that's so sad, Avengers, I didn't even notice. I didn't even know. So, um, I know people, when you're colorblind, it's, it's usually just to certain colors. Are you colorblind to, like, greens and blues, or, uh, not really sure how that works. Because <laughs> my poor karate master, um... Bless his soul, but he's he's colorblind to, like, purples and blues, and so it's really hard for him to tell the difference between the purple belt and the blue belt, and I feel so bad for him. <laughs> and he's, he's, like, no laughing matter. He's, like, in seventh degree or something. Like, he's really cool. He's a really cool guy, but, um, I feel so bad for him. It must be hard being, like, a karate master, like, trying to figure out what belt they are. Sometimes he just, like, calls one of us over when we're helping out with class or something. He's like, what belts are they? <laughs> um. You're not entirely sure what colors you mess up a ton of... That's so sad. Oh my gosh, that must be so frustrating. Okay, but, um. Gosh, imagine, imagine trying to, like, color correct photos or something. That just, that sucks. I'm sorry, man. I feel you. I feel you there. That's just bizarre. It's just... I wonder how many people are colorblind, because I've actually been hearing, uh, I don't know. I just... A lot of people lately I've been talking to are colorblind. Just, it's just weird. I wonder if there's, if there's anything you could do about that. Like, I wonder if there's certain, like, glasses you can order that'll help you... That's just... That's a good question. Maybe you should get get that checked out, see at least what colors you're having trouble with. Because that's, that's a good idea. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, man, I go past like a thousand things a minute. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> I can't just focus on one thing. Alright, so, let's say we're working on Figby's arm, right? It's all green, a green tube of fur with two yellow stripes. So, what I would probably do is I would label... Like, first of all, on this, on this piece, on the dummy, I would write the arrow going down, down the arm. Then I would label it as arm. I would just call it arm. Um, then, as soon as that yellow stripe, I would call it probably wrist stripe one. And then... The green, the green in between, I would call that, like, wrist stripe two, and then the yellow again, wrist stripe three, and then, uh, back to the green. I would either call that, like, arm tip, arm end, or wrist stripe last. Um, I label, label all the pieces as monotonously as you can. Like, extra detail rather than lesser, because, trust me, when it comes time to put it back together... You have, like, thousands of pieces spread across the floor. I think I actually have a picture of that when I did, uh, Spartans recently. And 
that I, I wanted to go over this exact reason, this exact thing, so I guess it's a good thing I'm bringing it up. Uh, yeah, give me just a second. Oh, no, did I not put it in there? Oh, uh, all right. This is fine. I guess I'm just gonna have to look for it. <sighs> all right. So yeah, um, every piece needs to be labeled. Every stripe, if you have like four stripes, like on Spartan's knee, he has three stripes. I would label that stripe top, stripe mid, stripe bottom, or stripe one, stripe two, stripe three. And if you do that, or or both, you could write all of the, all of the above, like top, middle, bottom, and uh, if you do write like numbers. I prefer to do like one one out of three, two out of three, three out of three, because um, if you're working like with a lot of stripes or something, you might miss two or something and not even notice it until after. And that's happened to me many times. Um, like I notice after and it's like, <laughs> if only I had written like four out of five or something on the, on the thing, otherwise I would have known better. But I didn't, I, if you didn't write it, then it's because when you, when you go to put all those pieces back together, that's when it's getting confusing. That's, that's why you want to write as much information as you can, even if it is monotonous. <laughs> Sorry. Um, should be in my scroll feed here any second now. Oh yeah, this is the picture of when, uh, I had my power outage. And it was the middle of the night, and the cat decided to try to lay on all my fur. I had to kick him out. But he's so cute, isn't he? Um. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So first off, uh, I got lots of images here. Let me let me actually find a good one. So this is this is Spartan's suit. Um. I would put this on this monitor, but it would take a lot longer. So you see that dark line? That's. That's where that rounded, like, that's, a. Uh, that's just how I marked it this time. I have the arrows, I have the exact description of what it is, where it goes. Um, and that's across the whole body. Oh, here, see, see the leg, uh, that big leg stripe right there? Like, that's exactly what, uh, Indigo has too. That big thick line right there. That, that, that's this knee line, like, below the knee line. So I need to make sure I cut that, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I already explained all this, so I don't have to. Alright, um, so here's where it starts getting confusing, especially the knee. I think the knee is the worst part. Um, when you get to the knee, like, there is a lot here. So let me explain. I, I labeled this so met meticulously. I enabled, labeled it the front inside thigh piece right here, um, and then this is like, what did I label that? I can't read it. Oh, I labeled it as the crotch piece. Like, I can't, I can't say enough how important it is to label these as closely as you can. Like, you wouldn't believe it. It's so helpful. Anyways, here's the picture. Here's the picture of all the pieces out on the floor. Um... Yeah. It was, it's, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot. Um, so as long as you have those labeled, you'll be able to puzzle piece it back together. Because essentially what you're doing is you're making a puzzle so that later, um, and, and you're making notes so that later you can put it back together without having to figure it out like a real puzzle. You're making cheats. You gotta cheat it. Okay, so yeah, once you draw the arrows on every piece, you want to draw, uh, write exactly what piece it is, where it's located, whatever. Like, um, don't just say leg. Like, you'd have a million pieces that say leg. Like, say, like, okay, uh, down there, like, calf, or, like, heel piece, or knee, front, knee, side, or, uh, back, knee, between, between heel and uh, back of leg, that would be like in between here. As much detail as you can. Sorry, I'm thirsty. <laughs> I've been talking so much today. I like hide away in my little hidey hole of my room and I get work done. 
And then, eventually, like a sim, my, um, my, my chatting bar goes down and I need to talk to someone, so I'm like, I must stream! And then I talk for, like, 18 hours. <laughs> oh, how old was I when I made Figby? I actually did that senior year of college, so... Oh, God. Alright, well, I graduated in December of 2017, but I stayed four and a half years, so... It must have been, like... 16 2016 or 2015 uh so let's I think 2016 15 15 I think it was 15 no it couldn't be can it has it really been that many years oh my gosh I'm having an existential crisis right now oh my god um okay okay let's say it was Wow. Okay, let's say it was 2016. That's, let's say that's when I made Phoebe. I think it was. Um, actually, you know what? I have I have a date. I do have a date. Let's do that. I need to know if I'm really, if that was really as long ago as I thought it was. Because. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. No, wait. What even? Can I just give myself a good. Okay. I can't even give my, I thought I found, uh the description, but I, I don't have it, so great! Okay, I think it was like 2016, so how many years is that? Four? Five, six? <laughs> five, like, okay, like maybe five years? Maybe like five years ago, so I was like 20? Yeah, that sounds about right, oh my god. Oh! Oh, guys! Oh boy! I'm getting old. I am getting old. I'm very, I'm very sad right now. Oh, man. Can't believe that. How's it been that long? How have I been out of college that long? What is this world? I feel like I want to play Shadow the Hedgehog now. <laughs> Alright, um. Wow. I feel old. Let's, let's finish this up. <laughs> Um, I made him up, uh, in sophomore year of college, we had to come up with a character, and, <laughs> well, I didn't know anything about furries, I've never heard of them, didn't know the first thing about drawing either, but, uh, it was time to learn, so it was learning drawing and character design for animation, you know, um, yeah, so sophomore year, so that would be 2014, yeah, 2014 to 15, and, uh, everybody was making characters. I've seen, I saw, like, aliens, robots, humans, elves, um, one was a turtle, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna make a wolf. Like, you know? And then, I, you know, I was just learning how to draw. I needed some reference, so I googled, um, wolf, st wolf standing on hind legs or something. Anyways... That was the first time I experienced uh, a Google furry search. <laughs> I was like, ugh. And from that point on, uh, I mean, I developed Figby into some, into a real character. And then I learned that fursuits exist. And I was like, I want a piece of that. Because I was so used to uh, sculpting, sculpting characters in 3D, you know? I... That's what I did. I made 3D models of characters. That was my, my job in animation. So, uh, when I've heard I heard I could make it into a costume, I loved that idea. So, yeah, Figby's been around for... It doesn't seem like long, but apparently it's been long. <laughs> my furry origin story. <laughs> it's like you go to church and you tell your testimony. Here I am with, like, my, uh... I need, like, some kind of fur... All right, so here's my my testimony of how I became a furry. <laughs> exactly. I don't. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Should make that into a separate video. Okay, I've rambled long enough. Um, 
Yeah, so it's very important to make sure that you label every piece. Then, take pictures. Take tons of pictures, so many pictures. Every single angle, get under the, oh, like under the armpit from this angle, this angle, this angle, every single angle, tons of pictures. Can't have too many pictures. Take them close up, take them far back. Um, you're gonna need these pictures to help you reassemble the puzzle. Seriously, trust me, you need those pictures. Like the ones I was just showing you, those those are the pictures just before I cut it off. You need those. So, um, that's the next step after you have it all labeled. Like, take all the pictures. Then, get your X-Acto blade. Da -da -da. And, uh, you know, really carefully, just kind of slowly go along those lines. Every single line, really careful. Um, there's no need to extend it all the way. If you have an extendable one like me, you know, you only need that tiny, tiny tip. So I would just use that, uh, just the tip if you can, because it lessens the probability of accidents and getting hurt. And uh, I actually do, I'm actually a scissors person. I prefer scissors. However, some of these areas are going to be hard to do with scissors, but you can do them with scissors. You can. You just got to be... You just gotta, you just gotta, sometimes you gotta start the hole with, like, the X-Acto blade, and then you can continue with the scissors. But, uh, yeah, I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, so you get all the pieces, you cut all the pieces off, and remember, remember at the beginning of this whole th stream when I said you put saran wrap, like the clear cling, cling wrap, plastic wrap, you put it on the body, because we did that, the inside of this duct tape will come right off. It's not going to stick to the body. And then, that's it. You have your patterns. Like, you have a whole ton of patterns. Maybe, like, 20-ish, maybe more, maybe less pieces uh, of your pattern. And then, from there, you know, you put each pattern on the fabric. You trace it. I mean, that's, that's its whole other thing. But that is what you do with the bodysuit. That was a lot of explaining... Um, not so much showing, I'm sorry. And we're in scissor hands, yes! <laughs> <laughs> then, and the fur just goes up. Oh my gosh, you know what? I love that idea. Maybe I should parody that. I should make a parody of that for Halloween. I, I love that idea. Would you guys, I mean, it, it, I mean, it wasn't really your idea, but would you guys mind if I did that idea? Like, that's awesome. I love that idea. That would be amazing. Female Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> and there's just gobs of fur coming up. Alright, uh, I did mention this quickly in a different stream. Like, one of the, one of the last two. Um, that this, this knee that's in here that's made out of the same upholstery foam as the foot. Um, that is just taped on here to help me get the shape for the duct tape dummy for the pattern. What I'm actually sending him home with is knee padding, like this. Goes right on your knee. It replaces, it replaces this. So, you need to make the, you need to make one knee, um, you need to, you need to make both feet out of upholstery foam. You can't get out of that. You have to make a butt out of upholstery foam, um, so that you can get the pattern for this butt. Um, and, and it's in here right now. The upholstery foam one is in here. So, the, the thing is, when you're done, you can use, you can make a pillow out of it. So you don't have to send them home with these huge hunks of upholstery foam. Um, you just need, you just need it on there to help you make a pattern. So, if I get somebody else commission me that's like the same height, I can actually put this knee on their duct tape dummy and make a pattern off of that. I don't have to remake that knee every time. And, um... Because of that, uh, when you're initially making knees like this, you only have to make one. You don't have to make two, because you can mirror the pattern. So, that's something that I forgot to mention last stream, and I'm sorry about that. I, I, think, I think I got most of the things I wanted to say, but later on I was like, you know, I should have mentioned, like, you gotta make, you only have to make one knee. And you can't see it, because it's underneath here. But, uh, here's my taller, here's my taller one. I have this one for tall people like Spartan. Um, yeah. So there's a little bit of a shorter one that's in this one. 
So just, I just keep them nice and I can keep reusing them to help me make new patterns. And maybe, uh, maybe one day I'll show how to do this. Make the pillows. I mean, it's, I mean, making the pillows for this is the same as everything else. Like, here is your butt. Uh, this is the padding I made for the other person, for Spartan. And, uh, you know, I put it on the dummy and I used it to make the shape for the, uh, for the, <laughs> I used it to make the shape for the, the pattern. Um, but obviously he didn't go home with this. He went home with the pillow. So how did I make the pillow? Well, I used this piece, I put masking tape on it, and then I cut off the masking tape, and there you go. That masking tape is the pattern. So it's exactly what we're doing with the foot, exactly what we're doing with the body. Um, so that knee, um, same exact thing. You need, a, like, this knee right here, you just cover it in masking tape, take it off, and that's your pattern for this which will give you the pillow. So, uh, you know, I would cut it, I would cut it around the edge here. So you have like a top piece and a bottom piece. And if you're feeling really fancy, you could cut it into three pieces, which is what I did. Um, so I have like the inside piece for the pillow and then I cut it in the middle. So there's a side and then a side. And uh, those three pieces are what make up this, this pillow. So once you get that masking tape, uh, pillow uh, pillow design make sure you save it save it for next time uh, because otherwise you'd have to cover that with masking tape every time and you, it, you're saving the foam knee it's the same shape so save the pattern for the pillow for that foam knee put it in a ziploc tape it to the thing whatever you got to do don't lose it Oh, you understand what I've been doing this whole time now. It's so confusing. I've just been talking about... If somebody just walked in, they'd just be like, What are you talking about? I don't know. It's like... Basically, that's what streaming is. Somebody shows up and they're like... They see me halfway talking about the middle of something. Passionately talking about... The way you put arrows on a fursuit body. And they're just like... What is this chick? <laughs> oh... I'm sorry, I really, really, really am passionate. I can't help it. I really care about this. Um, um, okay, well, I, did, I didn't show it, really, but I did say how I do the pillows. I, th I mean, I, I'm trying to give you guys as much information as you need, where if you follow these three streams, you should be able to do the whole dummy on your own. And you can message me if you have questions, of course. Or if you want me to, like... Look at something, see if it looks off or if it looks right. Like, uh, check out a shape for you or a pattern, whatever, whatever you might need. Um, but yeah. Oh, yeah, so if you do decide to mirror over this chest, um, depending on your person, it might not be able to mirror over, and that's okay. If you have to have a separate piece for this side and this side and still sew it in the middle, that's fine. You don't have to mirror this. I'd, I'd say I would mirror it, even if there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a bulge in the, in the pattern, but if it's kind of like a really big, if it's kind of like a really big deal, like it's not flat at all, I would definitely just cut it on both sides. Um, yeah. That's something I also wanted to mention. <laughs> um, I mean, I think I got everything. I was gonna say the tail, maybe? The tail is a story for another day, let me tell you. Um, we'll talk about that one day when we're working on tails. But as it stands, you just put the belt on your dummy and, uh, you know, like, look at the tail. Make sure it's, like, looks good. And then take very careful, uh, note of exactly where you need to put two slits to put the, uh, the, the tail belt through like where you need to the slits where you need to slide it through and i'll talk about uh i'll talk about durability and how to make that not stretch good really important stuff but i'll talk about all that later because i think i've talked enough today um about the bodysuit and that's that kind of goes along more with the next part where we sewing it all together anyways so um 
Boy, I've got tips for that too, so... Yeah! <laughs> now that I've talked your ear off for 18 hours. So, um... I knew this was gonna be a talking heavy stream, but I didn't know it was gonna be this crazy. Yeesh. So yeah, I'm gonna tell one more story. One, one that, I, that I've been meaning to tell. And I'm just gonna brush this tail. <laughs> uh, meanwhile. The dragon tail. Oh, there we go. And then I'm probably gonna go, because it's getting... It's getting a, a lot of talking makes makes Clover tired. This is my sock. It's I, it's just a sock that I use to cover the webcam. Like, uh... Because I don't have an actual case for the webcam, so if I have to travel with it... Which is more often than you'd think. Like, every time I gotta go downstairs with it or something. Uh, I just... I keep the sock on there. Okay. So, um... Yeah, so last, last story of the day. So, earlier I mentioned, uh, how there was a show on TV I saw a few years ago where they, they were making fun of, like, people, like, these two guys who were out in the woods pretend, like, they, they, like, acting like they actually were wolves, like, real wolves, and I, I, <laughs> I talked about that earlier. Anyways, the other show I wanted to mention was, uh, it was a My Strange Addiction episode, um, and they were making, well, they weren't making fun of, but they were just kind of, like, dial, like, not dialoguing, like, they were, they had a camera, and they were taking note of, uh, this person, and it was, it was a girl, probably about my age, who liked to, uh, dress up in, um, horse costume, I guess? She liked to, like, live-action roleplay being a horse and, like, pull people around in carts and, uh, have people feed her, and it was- I was like, okay, that would be kind of fun, actually, <laughs> but, um, it- so, yeah, the episode was basically just telling about what that- what she's doing, and then it was about her telling her family that she does that, and then- it was, like, weird. It was kind of like furries. Like, how they act- everybody acts like furries have to, like, come out or whatever to tell their parents or friends or family or something. It's just weird. Like, I don't know. Uh, I don't- I just don't understand why everybody has to make it into, like, such a weird thing. It's just, like, somebody likes to use their imagination for fun as their hobby. Something fun to do. They like to dress up. I mean- if a kid did that, it would be awesome. Like, they're using their imagination, they're dressing up, they're role-playing, but as soon as you hit a certain age, why is that suddenly taboo, you know? I just think it's kind of bizarre. I mean, this this person, she knew exactly that sh she was just role-playing. She knew she wasn't an actual horse. She was just role-playing, and, um, she was having fun with it. And you know what? I think that's really special. I mean, people... People roleplay, like, battles, like, uh, they dress up in, like, military uniforms and roleplay real-life battles, or, like, the Renaissance Festival, uh, people go there, they roleplay, like, merchants or, uh, adventurers, anything, really, so, I, I, I don't see the point in making fun of people for continuing to have an imagination while they're getting older. I think that's awesome. I wish that's a trait that everybody had, really. But yeah, that was the um, the other uh, story I had about times furries were uh, looked weird at, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, the camera is kind of weird right now. I'm sorry. It's at a really weird angle. But yeah, I, f I just wanted to tell that last story, so I figured I'd brush this tail on stream. <laughs> I had to brush it anyways, because I took it out. Oh god, oh god. We're sideways now. Um. <laughs> I gotta tighten this nut. Because it's, it's trying to turn on me. There we go, okay. That should do it. This is a really nice camera stand, for what it was. It was pretty cheap, and it came with like a, uh, like a button, a Bluetooth button. 
which is awesome. I didn't know that existed. You just Bluetooth connect it to your phone and uh, it acts like it acts like hitting the button. Like it acts like pressing an A button on a controller. So if you have your camera set up to a uh, camera or video, you click your little Bluetooth button and it'll it'll click the button for you. So if you adjust, if you put your camera, if you put your phone on here on the stand, you can go stand way back and use your Bluetooth button to take a picture of you. So I thought that was really cool. So if I, I've been using that to take pictures on my own because uh, I'm usually the only one here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, I think that's I think that's the best way to say it. Um, so yeah, some people make the furry thing inappropriate. <laughs> that's that's exactly the problem. Cause there's honestly like uh, and I I this is that's my argument that I use a lot of the time for a lot of people. Um, when people are like trying to trying to talk to me about how weird we are or whatever, I just, I say every fandom, and then I always use, I always use Star Wars and Star Trek, the star, those, there's so many people in those fandoms. Every fandom has weird people. Every. Single. One. So, don't focus on just the weird people on ours. Like, that's not right. Just focus on the majority of us who are just nice and like to make friends. I, that's, that's my argument all the time. But yeah, I, <laughs> Those few people, those few people are totally wrecking it for the rest of us. It's just, wow. <laughs> um, next time on Clover Anime. Okay, I'm sorry for that. I'll never do that again. Um, I may or may not pattern this. If you need help, um, what to do next, and I do not make a video within like a week, uh, you can ask me for help or whatever, um, but yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna show it on camera or not. Sorry. <laughs> we'll see. I think I explained a lot, though. Lots of important information. Uh, in this, this little story time, little story time. We, we had fun today. I mean, I, I knocked over the camera a few times, and, uh, I mean, I threw Spartan's body on the floor over there, so, he's just... There. <laughs> yeah, and the general public only sees those. You're so right, you're so right. Those are the only people that they see is just the weird ones. And honestly, that's the way the media likes it. They like, they like giving stories and uh, making other people look bad. I mean, it's the same reason people make video game videos of how much they hate video games. Certain video games that are, like, bad. It's like... It's fun to hate on something, and I admit, it is, but, uh, at the same time, like, that's a video game made by people, like, 20, 30 years ago. This is an active group of people who are just trying to have a fun time in the current day. I, I don't know. I think it's a slightly different situation, but... Spartan is just dead in the corner! <laughs> Honestly! All that's left of him is his pelt and one hand. You just realized your birthday is a week from today. Oh! Oh, wait! Oh, wait! Are you the person that has the same birthday as me on September 7? I think you are. Somebody somebody in the server had the same birthday as me. <laughs> Media sensationalism. Now that's a fun word. Okay, as soon as I get off, I am booking... Wow, is it really that... Whew. As soon as I get off, I'm booking an appointment to get my hair redyed. This is bad. It's too long. It is too long. Uh, I have no more bangs. They they just grew out. They they don't exist. Yeah. Um. Boy, yeah, that's the first thing I'm doing. Well, thanks for hanging out with me, guys. Um. I. Oh. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Okay, thank you for the parentheses, Indigo, because you know I keep getting confused. <laughs> I appreciate that. There's so many logins for everybody. I just lose it all the time. I I try my best, but I can't remember. Yeah! Where I'm gonna be even older! <laughs> Gosh. 
I hate I hate this age. I I hate being old. But yeah, um awesome. I guess I guess we'll both have to celebrate our birthdays next week when the thing happens. What day of the week is it? Oh yeah. Well, you could change it if you want. You don't have to, but if you did, it would be a lot less confusing. <laughs> it's up to you. Is um I was just trying to get out my calendar. The 7th is a Tuesday. Interesting. Like, when I was a kid, I hated that my uh, birthday always happened after after school started. Like, it was always right after school started. Usually it was, like, the first week of school was when my birthday would come. Like, on the Friday or something. But, uh, yeah. I, 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 it would have been nicer during the summer, because then you could actually go celebrate somewhere or something. Here's this Tuesday next week, mine is Friday. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah. Well, we're gonna have to celebrate. Uh, I don't know what we'll do. Maybe I'll just send you a ton of cakes in the chat or something. <laughs> Maybe we'll have a birthday stream. I don't know, I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm doing for my birthday. I don't have any plans. Everybody's in the hospital, so. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> old person. <laughs> Thank you. If you didn't say it, I was gonna. <laughs> well, this was a long stream. I'm tired now. I gotta finish this bodysuit. I think I, I think I will be able to do it easily once I'm not multitasking anymore, so. I guess I'm gonna be going then, because I said all the stuff I wanted to say today. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks for hanging out with me, everybody. I really appreciate it. Uh, hope you learned something and or got some form of entertainment. Uh, we were just talking about making stuff and telling stories. Good time. So, I will see you all next time. I hope. <laughs> just don't die, okay? Um, bye!